um, um, yeah. Oh, Brendan. sure. Yes, it's uh, it's Brendan Zarechian. Baz, <laughs> Baz, is, Baz is my initials. Can you spell your last name, please? Sure. It's uh, Z A R. Yep. E C H. Yep. I A N. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yep. Are you here for the hearing? Uh, I am. Yeah. Great. Okay. Uh, Matt. Could you introduce yourself for the um, for the minutes? I'm Matthew Baltier. I'm a neighbor of one of the properties uh, under discussion. Thanks. Could you spell your last name, please? B is a boy. Yes. A L T I E R. Great. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Shar. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Paul Shar. I'm at 47 Mount Vernon Street. I'm here to talk about the, the trees and Memorial Park. And just for the record, minutes, my husband, Walter Tuval, T is in Tom, U-V-E-L-L, -L, is just out of uh, camera. And our cat, Tux, is also there too. <laughs> I don't think I need Tux's name. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Um, for since Charlene couldn't be here, I'm gonna make Virginia a voting member for the night. Um, and I think we can go ahead and I will open up the hearing to um, add three properties to our list of historic structures. Um, I'm gonna just read a little bit of um, what we're looking for in the historic structures and then we'll read a little bit about each house. And um, there'll be time for comments after we do each property and then we'll close the hearing and then we'll vote on whether or not we want to accept them into our historic inventory or not. Um, so the, um, I'm just gonna read the list from our bylaws of what we're looking for and adding a, a house to the historic inventory. Um, the criteria to be used, um, for consideration for inclusion on the list will include uh, the structure is determined to be important, importantly associated with one or more historic persons or events, or the structure is determined to be associated with the broad architectural, cultural, economic, or social history of the town or commonwealth, or the structure is believed to be historically or architecturally significant in terms of period, style, method of building construction um, or an association with a significant architect, builder, or resident, either by itself or as part of a group of buildings. So that's what we're looking for to add things. Um, right, so the first property on the list is 832 Main Street. Um, I think, um, Jonathan, I asked if you would read the um, the architectural description and the historical narrative, so we know um, what we're looking at for um, this house. Sure, thank you. I'd be I'd be happy to, and I know um, Kurt Habel is also here this evening, so uh, he he can obviously elaborate on on anything yeah. I say or or uh, correct uh, anything that I say. So reading from the, and I know he has also received a copy of this document as well. So, um, so he should have that as well. And it, it would certainly be available. Um, under the architectural description, I'll just uh, read from it. Um, this house uh, is positioned on the westerly side of Main Street that was established in 1806 as the Andover Medford Turnpike. The simple architecture is a wood framed quote unquote half house sited close to the street. The half house was often built with the intention of adding to it as finance is allowed. It is literally half of the common five bay structure with the front entrance at the end rather than the center. Most houses of this age faced south, yet this home faces the street that may have shown the importance of living on the new thoroughfare, the Andover Medford Turnpike. The main block is clapboarded. Uh, has three second floor six over six windows set close to the eaves, while the first floor features two slightly larger six over six windows. The front entrance has an unadorned projecting pediment shaped overhang supported by two turned posts 
which is likely a later addition sheltering the side lighted front door. The gabled roof shows a narrow, slightly offset chimney, an attic window, and eave returns. A one-story extension to the rear provides more living space, primarily for kitchen use. Within part of the extension is a viable well under the floorboards. The peak of the pitched roof supports a small cupola, while the end of the structure has a large exterior brick chimney. The property also has a small barn located to the back, but separate from the house. I should actually have uh, on this document for folks who are here from, uh, from the public. And so uh, if anybody's watching on TV can see, this is the document I'm reading from. And that, that picture isn't coming out particularly well, but that's, uh, that's a photograph of uh, the house from, from Main Street. Uh, continuing under comments, this house was possibly moved here in the early 1800s. It does not have a large central chimney from earlier days. It would be interesting to learn if the construction is of mortise and tenon framing or later balloon framing. The present owner confirms the roof construction is of Perlin technique indicating early construction. We may never know its true origins. Under the historical narrative, let me read from that as well. Assessor's records list this house as built in 1760. However, town archive records are unable to confirm this date. There were reports that the house was moved to its present location where it's oriented eastward towards what is now Main Street, which was originally constructed in 1806, as I said, as the Andover Medford Turnpike. These facts reasonably support dating the house to at least circa 1806. The 1830 Reading map appears to show a house at this location and the earliest deed documents presented by the current owner reflect the sale of the house on October 12th, 1829 by Charles Parker recorded as quote unquote gentleman to Stephen Locke recorded as quote unquote cordwainer. On March 29th, 1834, as a result of a lawsuit, the house was conveyed to Thomas Pratt recorded as quote unquote a traitor traitor with a D. Sorry about that. The Parker and Pratt families are among Redding's founding families. And when Thomas Pratt conveyed it to Nathaniel Parker on April 2nd, 1835, the house remained in the Parker family for several decades. Milo Parker, who lived here beginning on February 27th, 1837, also owned property on the other side of what is now Federal Street. While living here, Milo Parker built the current Milo Parker House, which is at 836 Main Street, which structure is listed on Reading's historical and architectural inventory. Owners of 832 Main Street included cabinet makers, Milo Parker, Richmond Heselton, a used furniture dealer, Michael Quinlan, a hairdresser, Mary Quinlan, an auctioneer, Maurice Riebenacker, a carpenter and pig farmer, George Davis, a liquor store decorator, Donald Sullivan, and last but not least, a house painter, Mr. Hagel himself. That would conclude the historical narrative. Thank you. Thanks, Jonathan. Um, Kurt or anyone else, do, would you like, do you have anything else to add about the house or any, any comments you'd like to share with us? Yeah, just off the things you have, um, it's definitely post and beam. Um, I don't know if I can do this. This is the downside of Zoom meetings. <laughs> That's a, a post. <laughs> so I've been in thousands of antique buildings. This is the only time I've ever seen a post flush to the wall. Oh. I can't get up. If I could get up, you could see the pegs sticking out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's post and beam for sure. The roof, when we had it done, had um, vertical sheathing boards, which I think is a sign of an old house. Um, there's only one original window. It's in our pantry, and it's a six over six. All the others were used windows put in uh, during World War II. So
So I know you guys, guys don't necessarily use the word I think or the phrase I think too much, <laughs> but I think the front door faces a cemetery, not Main Street. Oh. It's larger, prettier, um, because even in 1806, the cemetery would be far away. The cemetery wasn't expanded until 1846. So if you were to walk to town, it would make sense that you go out the door that faces the south rather than the one that faces east. I put the columns on the main street door. The little roof structure was there when I moved in. Um, then I got some columns and I looked in Field Guide to American Houses and that little pediment roof or whatever supported by columns um, was in this section for common entryways in 1760. Around the front door, I've painted over. I was just trying to fill in the gaps. There's also a lot of evidence that there was a central chimney that's been removed, but there's no way to know, was the house moved here after they took the chimney out or was the mm -hmm. chimney removed after, you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, in the basement, there is a structure to support a big central chimney, but there isn't a big central chimney. Instead, mm -hmm. there's a couple closets and like a dining room hutch. else have any comments or questions? Oh, I just one more thing and then please, I don't want to take your time. There's other people here. Um, I've worked a lot on the Dascom house in Andover, which is 1759. And the chimney support structure in the Dascom house is the same as mine. The roof structure is the same. And the stairway or the railings if you came in our main street door there's a two-story stairway with a railing and the railings identical to the dask house okay. it's just coincidence 1759 1760. Mm. 
There is an important thing that suggests that the house was built here. And that is, um, again, I've never seen this in any other house. Um, between the stairway and the main street stairs and a bedroom, there's an interior window that opens like, like a casement that goes to a bedroom. So it faces directly east and it gives light to a room that otherwise would only have a northern window. So that kind of makes you think maybe it was built here. Why would you put that window in? You know what I mean? If the house wasn't here originally, you wouldn't have an east facing window. So there. But that's all I have to say. Thanks, Kurt. Um, Virginia? I once uh, heard a historic preservationist admit that the only way you can really document the age of a house is if you tear it apart. And then you no longer have the historic house. So <laughs> we'll go with the, we'll go with assumptions. <laughs> if you guys run out of things to do, you might want to look into the barn, which has definitely moved here. I think it's been moved more than once. And it used to have a plastered interior, walls and ceiling, which seems odd for a barn. Mm -hmm. Also a chimney. Pretty fancy for a barn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great. All right, I think we'll I'll move on and, and read the descriptions of um, 767 Main Street, which Virginia's um, kindly offered to do for us. Very good. Uh, this. Uh, building has a lot of documentation for its architectural description, which I won't read because uh, generally we don't uh, go inside a historic house when we're considering it to put on the inventory. Um, but the previous owners before they sold it invited us to go through. So that gave uh, the commission an opportunity to make a lot of observations and picture documents, but I'll just read the historical narrative, okay? Great. Probably one of the first houses designed by the notable Reading architect, Winthrop D. Parker. Note Parker is the same Parker family as in the previous household. Um, it was commissioned by his father, Galen A. Parker, while his son was a student at MIT class of 1896. The extant plans with the present or former homeowners are undated. He had been previously educated at Phillips Academy in Andover, Mass. Winthrop Dana Parker was born into the extensive Parker clan in Reading in October 26, 1871. His father, Galen, was born at 52 Salem Street and later built a house at 1 Charles Street, now demolished for condominiums. Winthrop never married and two of his sisters remained single. One sister, Edna Marion, born in 1874, married Leon G. Bent um, in October 14th, 1896. And it was for them that this house was designed. It was first assessed to the Bents in 1900. Parker established an architectural firm on State Street in Boston um, in partnership with Willard P. Adden, also of Reading. Their firm designed many schools, public buildings, and residences throughout New England, including Beverly Rockport, Nashua, New Hampshire, and uh, Shawsheen Village in Andover. Locally, they were responsible for plans for the high school at 52 Sanborn Street, which it is now. Oh, Virginia, your sound is gone. Let's see. Sorry, I hit a key. Oh. <laughs> All right, so um, they designed the um, present 52 uh, Sanborn Street. And in 1906, the rebuilding of the Old South Church from measured drawings done by Parker after a fire in 1912. The town hall and the former library building, which is now the town annex on Lowell Street, 
It was built in uh, 1918 and the Lowell Street School at the same time. Congre Congregational Stone Church edition in 1918, Victory House on Ash Street um, <coughs> in 1918, the Unitarian Church in 1923, the Masonic Building edition along Main Street, the shops at number 610, 612, and 622. <clears throat> In 1929, Parker Jr. Um, oh, he, he built the Parker, designed the Parker uh, High School, Junior High School. Excuse me. And um, <clears throat> He did the police station that was formerly on Pleasant Street in 1931. It was demolished in 2000. The Girl Scout cabin in Forest Street in 1942, which was lost to fire. And the Reading Memorial High School on Oakland Road in 1954. The firm expanded and eventually became Adden Parker, Clinch and Crimp. Leon G. Bent was active in town affairs, town accountant from 1921 to 1946, the clerk to selectman, the finance committee and contributory retirement board from 1941 to 51. He was treasurer of the Massachusetts Association of Finance Committees. And in 1947, he was elected to the board of assessors and held the office until his death on June 26, 1954. He was survived by his wife and a son, Dana B. Pent Bent of Southbridge, Mass, and two grandchildren. And the, um, a lot of the information about the architectural description are from the actual uh, architectural drawings. Um, if there are any questions, I can try to answer them. Thanks, Virginia. Mr. Brandt, do you have anything you want to add or uh, stories about your house or anything you would like to comment on? You just have to click that mute button in the lower left corner. Oh. There we go. Okay. Uh, no, the information that you sent me early on uh, is in great detail and really describes the house as it is today. The only discrepancy uh, on the back porch, we do not have a little door for the ice man's deliveries. Oh. Uh, presumably that, that's irrelevant today, I guess. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it was recorded on the the information. Uh, I have no other comments. Thanks. Um, I noticed um, Louise has joined the meeting, and I wonder if you could give your name for the um, for our secretary for the minutes, if you can hear us. What is it? Did you like? Oh. Um, Are you talking to me? No, Craig. Mr. Brent, there's um, someone else who's joined named Louise. I don't, but um, her video is not on, but if you have, if she may not be able to hear us right now, so we'll see. Uh, does anyone else have anything they'd like to add? Oh, I, here I am. Oh, hello. Hi. What did you want to know? Oh, you know, we need to record the folks who come to the meeting for our minutes and could you uh, give your name to our secretary, Amelia? Sure. Louise Romano. Thanks. <clears throat> Does anyone else have any anything they'd like to add about um, seven what seven sixty seven Maine? Oh, Kurt, go ahead. <laughs> I don't want to add anything. I'm just curious. Is that the house next to the fire station? I like that house. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. All right. 
I will move on to um, uh, the third property is um, 27 Hillcrest Road. And the owner, uh, Andy Friedman, couldn't come, but he, he, he let me know he's in the full support of us adding this to the inventory. And I'll go ahead and uh, read the information for that house. Um, the design elements of this house depict Queen Anne interpretations, namely the decorative wood shingles on the second floor, while the first floor is clapboard with several projecting bays. Trim details define the floor levels, and paired windows are prominent in the front attic gable. Instead of the customary Queen Anne turret, the design features an unusual rounded oriel window suspended from the second floor at the northeast corner. Clad in the same decorative shingles of the second floor, it is capped by a wrought iron railing. The base is a cone shaped with tapered vertical wood slats at the first floor level. The gable end, gable end front of the main house has a first floor entry porch with thinly turned posts. The ceiling level is adorned with small turned spindles. The south side elevation has an enclosed porch with slight hipped roof along with a sizable projecting second floor dormer and bay that is decoratively supported with a scalp bracket. The side elevation, uh, the north, along Howard Street shows a slightly overhanging second story bay with decorative supporting brackets. Also on the roof is a small attic dormer with two small windows. A brick chimney is located to the rear but within the main block. The rear attic elevation is sheathed in clapboards. A one-story addition extends to the rear of the main block. This living space contains a rear entry and culminates with an attached garage. The, the design of this house is eclectic with playful surprises. I like that comment. <laughs> so for the historical narrative, um, 27 Hillcrest was first owned by Edward M. Sawyer, who, who according to his obituary was chief engineer for the lumber concern of Palmer, Parker and Company maybe Reading men in Charlestown, Mass. This may be why his house was embellished with unusual decorative shingle work and highlighted with the rare to Reading Oriel window. Sawyer was born in East Boston in 1852 and appears in the 1890 valuations as owning land only in Reading. The house was first assessed to Sawyer in 1891. Both he and his wife are buried at Laurel Hill Cemetery. Next residents of the house were Willis G. Oh, Hanchett and his wife Grace. They came from Medford, Mass. Hanchett was a train man and presumably walked to the train like many Westside residents. Grace is listed as the owner in 1936 and 37 when the address was changed from number 39 to the current 27. Other occupants included the Reverend Paul Sheldon, who was pastor to the Reading Congregational Church from 1947 to 1968. He was responsible for a significant building program and represented Massachusetts as a delegate in Cleveland, Ohio during the 1957 merger that created the United Church of Christ. So that's 27 Hillcrest um, road. Uh, does anyone have any comments about about um, about the um, about this house or anything like they'd like to add? All right. Oh, Virginia. It was fun to look at that house and write the description yeah. because it has so many different things happening to it. Uh, but I would like to just as a point of reference for our minutes note that we received word today that um, the owner of the property did not receive the certified notice of this hearing. However, because he did verbally um, assure Jonathan, and Jonathan can assure us, that um, he wanted it to um, proceed. Um, I just want it on the record that uh, in cases of an issue that he didn't receive, uh, or we didn't receive back the certified letter. Oh, where, where did you, I didn't hear of this. Um, oh, that was uh, through town hall, through Amanda. Oh. Email today. 
this afternoon. I didn't get it. <laughs> oh, gee, again. I sometimes don't get mails from town hall like yeah. right away. Uh, Jonathan? Uh, to that point, I think, Sam, if I remember correctly, oftentimes Amanda sends them to us individually as well as to the RHC forwarding address. That one, may, she may have only sent to the RHC forwarding address, which may account for yeah, why you didn't get it, in which case you, you may want to check with the IT people. But to the to the more significant point, uh, yes, I absolutely can attest. Uh, I had a very recent uh, conversation uh, with the owner at 27 Hillcrest where we specifically discussed the hearing date, uh, which I confirmed with him and he was aware of, uh, and uh, his strong interest in uh, having the, the structure placed on the inventory, notwithstanding the fact that he informed me, uh, as he may have also informed you, Sam, that he was unable to make it this evening. He very much uh, wanted this to go forward. I assured him he was first concerned about the fact that he wasn't uh, necessarily so able to be here. And I, I assured him that he was more than welcome, but that uh, we, we were perfectly capable of proceeding um, in his absence. And I would represent make those representations about his, his interests um, to the commission. And our bylaw says if, if someone isn't present at the hearing to find out if their home has been added, that we're to send them a letter informing them of that fact. So we'll make sure we follow up with that. Um, Virginia? Um, as long as I'm a voting member tonight, I'll move that the uh, hearings for the three properties be closed. Are there any other comments before we close the hearing, Jonathan? Uh, the only comment, thanks, Virginia, um, and I had taken a look at, at, at that as well, and I guess just in terms of this, the similar um, formality with which we uh, worded the motions for the other public hearings, what I would like to suggest is you that, know any of these people, Michelle? that we also indicate that the, um, the commissions and the owners presented information is complete and sufficient to make a final determination on the proposed inclusion uh, of the structures and therefore the public hearing is closed. And I can send that, uh, if, that's, if that's considered friendly, Virginia, I can send that yes. to you, uh, uh, Amelia, if you prefer. Now I'm confused. Is that an official motion we need to vote on? That's how we just for for the formality. That is, we clearly have to close it, and those yeah. those are the conditions um, in the bylaw um, which provide for the commission to close the 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 public hearing. So I just uh, took a look at the the wording that we had used in the public hearings, which have similar language uh, for the demolition delay bylaw, um, and I just parroted that same language. So it does indicate, yeah, that the presented information is complete and sufficient. Gotcha. So I, I will withdraw my motion and yield to uh, Jonathan's. That makes sense. Um, I tell you, tell me when you're ready, Amelia, and we can vote. I, I, Jonathan? I, I, I can also, I, I did the same thing, by the way, with, with the, uh, the motions regarding um, placing the inventories on the, on, uh, placing the structures on the inventory. So I'd be happy to make, uh, to make that motion as well, if uh, if the chair would would wish sure. that. Um, I, I didn't, yeah. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Then I'm sorry. I didn't have anything in particular right now. So if, did we'll did go. you I'm, did you want to do them individually or do them? I I can word I, them. No, I was going to do them all at once. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Amelia, do you need to see if the public has any remarks before we vote? No, I, no, but I will ask one last time if anyone wants to add anything before we go ahead and vote to close the hearing. Nope. Okay, did we have a, a second for the motion? I'll second. I'll Jonathan. second. Okay, sorry, Fina. <laughs> Jonathan, did you have? Uh, yeah, sure. And Amelia, I'm, I'm sorry, it's a little wordy. Uh, <laughs> And I can, uh, surprise, surprise, and I can email it uh, uh, to you. Um, I would then uh, move that the structures at 832 Main Street, 767 Main Street, and 27 Hillcrest Road um, 
each meet the criteria of Reading Bylaw 7.2.3.1 in that uh, each is associated with the broad architectural, cultural, economic, and social history of the town. And they are each historically and architecturally significant. And as such should be added to the commission's list of historic structures and to the commission's historical and architectural inventory. Hang on, Jonathan, we need to vote to close the hearing and then we can vote. That oh, okay, first. okay. We have to close Sorry. The hearing, and then, then we can decide if we're gonna accept the houses into the inventory. So uh, let's go ahead and vote on the first motion, which was to close, that we have enough information that to close the hearing. Um, so I'll go around and ask um, uh, Virginia. Yes. Pino? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. Amelia? Yes. And I'm yes. So that's fine. <clears throat> well, officially the hearing is closed and now we can um, vote on Jonathan's second motion to accept all three properties into our historic and architectural inventory. Um, I'll, I'll second that if we need a second. Tell us when you're ready, Amelia. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So I'll go around and take the vote on that. So Virginia? Yes. Uh, Pino? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. Amelia? Yes. And I vote yes. All right. Thanks very much for the owners and everyone else who came for the hearing. All three are now in our historic inventory. Thank you. Growing the list. No, we, we lose some occasionally, but we're trying to keep, <laughs> keep our list there. Is there any other comments from folks who came? All right. Thank you. It was interesting nope. to see how it, it was interesting to see the person, you know, the procedure. Yeah, I know we haven't. Um, how, when was the last time we added some to the inventory, Virginia? We did a large group um, probably close to 10 years ago. So it's been quite a while. So we're, we're glad to be I able think to this, I think this was the first time we, that we've done it independent of the, uh, of the consultants um, inventorying the home. So um, this is a significant uh, moment for the commission. <laughs> and of course, for the homeowners. Yes, Linda? How long has the um, the register been? You know, when did it first start here in Reading? Virginia, go ahead. Nineteen eight, nineteen eighty two. Okay, because our house is next to Kurtz, and it um, it was we're, we've been here almost thirty two years, and it was on when we moved here. We moved here in nineteen eighty nine, so it must have been one of the first houses, eight thirty six Main Street, to be. Um, it was. It was. Mm -hmm. Oh. Cool. The My Milo Parker house. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And that would have been, I um, can't think of the name, but they did a whole lot, a bunch of research. Romigs, the Romigs did, must have done the research. No, actually, very early on, uh, the town hired professionals that did the initial inventory that was over 100 properties. So it, it was documented by, um, professionals. Oh, okay. Oh, it's good to know that our house was professionally <laughs> professional. assessed. Okay. Virginia, how many houses were added with that in that first round? That was oh, <laughs> I would say close to 300, but I, I'm reluctant to say a, a solid number. The, the important thing was that all these houses that were selected were um, documented from the outside um, the, as we had we didn't have permission to go into the houses and uh, so they would evaluate them from the street and then do uh, historical research to flush them out as to the owners and all and our house had the distinction of being the very first house when we pulled a permit on the new you know demolition Oh. Um, to be flagged, the very first one. Huh. 
Jonathan Edwards, for those of you who remember him, who was yeah. the planner, who had been in the house, the part that we were demolishing was this 1950s sunroom that was just about falling down. And fortunately, he was there and said there was nothing historic about what they're taking down. Okay. You know, we, were, we were very fortunate because um, it was going to fall. I mean, literally, when we took off the clabbers, it fell down. The clabbers mm -hmm. were holding it up. You know, so <laughs> structural clabbers, if you've ever heard of those. <laughs> Wow. Thank you very much. We're going to uh, move on. We've got a, several more things on the agenda. We're going to go ahead and move on. Um, the next thing we were going to discuss is. Uh, Thank you. Yep. Oh, you're welcome. Jonathan. Yeah, Sam, I just wanted to um, to note for the record that I see that uh, the select board member, um, Karen Herrick, is, appears to have joined us. Oh, thank you. There, there's a photo, but no name. So I. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, oh, there you go. Okay. I can see my name on there. Karen Gately Herrick. I didn't want to interrupt. I just no, wanted to join fine. this evening. Thanks. Congratulations on expanding the inventory. <laughs> but surely. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? Well, I have your attention. While I interrupted anyway. Um, you know, Matt Cronallis is always looking for good PR for the Town of Reading website. If you wanted to send over a little, um, send over pictures and an announcement, I think that would make a great um, item for social media. That'd be I great. said website, but I also mean social media. Yeah, that'd be great. It's um, Historic Preservation Month too, so that, that'll- Oh, awesome, great. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, oh, all right. Um, so Paul Shar is here. He wanted to discuss um, project. He's thinking about to um, plant a grove of trees to honor World War One veterans. Um, and I uh, thought, oh, hello. Greetings. <laughs> yeah, um, I know we don't really have control over what gets planted in the park, but if it's a historic project, I thought we'd like to hear about it, and, and it's probably something we would like to support. And um, uh, so why don't you go ahead and tell us um, what, what you've been researching and, and are planning. Thank you very much for, for making the time. So uh, as a now um, uh, <laughs> personal interest in looking up the history of writing and so on, I uh, is going back a few years looking into uh, Memorial Park and finding about its uh, interesting history. And one of the things that uh, struck me in learning about the, the town day, which was just such a, a big event, uh, is one, I didn't know about it. Uh, I've been in, uh, didn't grow up here, but I've been here for 30 years and that was, that was news to me. And I found it to be just an amazing uh, event. And then uh, referenced in that uh, description, which I found articles and a number of, uh, number of uh, publications, was a reference to uh, the the boulder which we have today prominently displayed on Salem Street but also a reference to 13 elm trees which were uh, placed each one planted for uh, each of the uh, uh, veterans who were being honored and the only description that I found thus far is that these 13 elm trees lined a path and presumably that might be what might be the main entrance, but I know there's been some other changes around to the uh, dimensions of the park. And uh, doing my survey of things, I, I, I can't find a spot where I thought, you know, where it was logical and uh, poking around. I don't think we have elm trees anymore. So my, my, uh, my thought here is that uh, it was, uh, it was a important part of the uh, the whole, mem I know Memorial Park was not based on uh, memorial to the veterans, but it, uh, the, the park would not be in its current form today without the event of there being the World War and the, uh, the town day that was organized by, uh, uh, was it uh, Warren Manning, uh, the uh, famous architect who uh, put together the town day and, you know, and uh, the headline saying, you know, 5,000 people of Reading came together and did all this, but well, there are only 7,500 people in the whole town uh, to begin with. So it was everybody and it was a big deal. So then looking more about this, the trees in general, I found that uh, this was actually part of a national movement. 
to plant trees for uh, for fallen soldiers across the the entire country. And uh, it's, it, you may or may not be familiar with the uh, the American Forestry creating a registry that would uh, document the names of all of the uh, of all of the soldiers being being so honored. So I, I look at it as a, a great opportunity. So I first learned about this a few years ago, just kind of uh, opportunity didn't, <laughs> didn't present itself. And they did it on this town day on Patriots Day in 1919. And I thought, wow, wouldn't it be nice at some future Patriots Day for there to be a town day again, or some sort of incorporation of this as a uh, to reestablish this uh, touching uh, memorial. And I know there'd be a huge amount of work involved in, uh, there's a, many stakeholders that would be involved in, in something like this uh, from you know, the parks and the town and, and uh, depending on where, where would you put it? You know, I, and I don't know exactly where it was to begin with, which is a question, one of the questions I'm hoping you might be able to help with is uh, uh, I, I've identified a, a one repository of the papers of, uh, of Manning's papers are in the University of Iowa or Iowa State, which is one lead. And I have heard uh, that there may be papers of his work in town and the Historical Commission may have received copies of this at some point, I don't know, uh, but... Uh, I was hoping you might be able to point me in a direction or uh, adopt the idea and, and be a, be a co-sponsor to help, uh, I don't know, uh, make connections within the town, help me identify who, what other uh, organizations or bodies would be uh, needed to move something like this forward. I could see it touching a lot. And then uh, it also occurred to me that uh, as I looked through this, uh, the historical record of the American forestry thing, they have you know all these. Uh, uh, they uh, there's a lot, a lot of activity in 1919, and it included a number of other towns uh, throughout the country, including Massachusetts. And I as I thought, hmm, I wonder if this could be bigger than just a single town. And I started. I, I one of the towns I was successful connecting with was in uh, in uh, Marblehead where they were able to figure out that, yes, <laughs> they did participate in it. And the uh, looking at old uh, uh, newspapers of the time brought me to a certain thing. I mean, they, they have their own mini memorial park. And uh, I went out there, took pictures. They have, they have trees with nice little uh, granite, uh, uh, little sign or uh, granite, posting there for each of the, the soldiers. And one tree has been replaced, uh, but uh, I, was just, I was thinking, so they're, they're, they're all up to date with their, you know, with their memorial and they've combined it with other, with other uh, memorials to, for uh, veterans of other wars. But I thought uh, for, you know, for Reading, one, so there's this, this missing component and given it's a hundred years later and a lot of stuff has happened, there would be an opportunity to create something within Memorial Park that would be encompassing of the spirit of that initial uh, initial uh, uh, gesture. And also consider you know, it's the 21st century and uh, I don't know, there, there, there's a lot of potential here for something bigger than just Reading. And there may be other towns that wanna to do something to coordinate uh, and uh, yeah, to create a coordinated event. And it could be, and that might even be bigger. I don't know. A, a, there's towns all over the country that, that might be interested in this. So not to put too much pressure on you, <laughs> but uh, what I'm looking for, uh, since this is just a kicking around idea thing, this starting at the, the local level here is, I was hoping you would uh, validate that, you know, yes, indeed, there were elms planted that were, it was part of that original design of the current uh, park and that it's worthy pursuing the recreation of some version of that and uh, and and explore the the, the concept great um, I'll start with Virginia because she might know the most um, right now we uh, as far as what the the town what we have uh, for information on 
uh, Warren Manning and the park in general. Um, first, I could say we just got, oh, go ahead, Virginia. Yeah. No, first of all, um, I wish we weren't doing Zoom because I'd go up and hug this man because <laughs> that's so exciting. <laughs> At least you should join the commission. Somebody that put all that effort into it is remarkable. I'm very impressed. Um, and I'd like to encourage you to go up to town hall when it's open and go into the conference room and you'll see pictures of the uh, community day with the hundreds of people there. And you may very soon see a uh, box, a utility box near um, the park or on the park perimeter that will have the picture of hundreds of people there for community day. Now, I just want to um, explain that I don't think a lot of Warren Manning's plans came to fruition. Um, he volunteered his time. Um, there was an old barn on the property that was taken down. I don't recall ever seeing pictures of elms going along the pathway, but I think it'd be fun to pursue that at any rate. And of course, there were lots of elm trees up around the common, but they've all died off from Dutch elm disease. And there is a um, newer species that is re resistant to Dutch elms so that they, uh, the elms are starting to make their comeback again. Um, so I think we'd need to do a little more work on it, but um, I could certainly jump on board for it. So Yay. thank you. Thank you. Virtual hug back. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Amelia? So who has the scrapbook? Exactly. I have the scrapbook. I was just going to mention that. Um, yeah. Go ahead, Sam. Yeah, we got a, a just we're, we're uh, the Mary Temple scrapbook, who is uh, I think related to the folks who donated the land for the park. Correct. She has all scrapbook about the park, and we in our last month's meeting voted to accept it into the town archive collection. Mm. And it's still at my house because I our access to town hall is limited, and I haven't gotten over there. But. Um, now that I know a little more specifically what you're looking for, I can leaf through it again and see if there's any mention. There are a lot of newspaper articles, but some other information about the park in that. And Jonathan? Yeah, yeah wasn't there a, a design plan for, I know it didn't, it certainly didn't come to fruition, but, and, and right. I remember seeing that design plan, that in that design plan, I don't remember whether it indicated uh, any elm trees, um, as mm -hmm. Mr. Char is talking about, but it would be interesting to take a look at that. If you want to keep talking, I can go. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Give me one moment. Well, I, I would, uh, I guess I would just uh, say that I, number one, to Virginia's point about the commission, Mr. Char, we, we are short of, uh, of membership. Um, we have full complement of regular members, um, but we do not have all, we have three associate positions, mm -hmm. which I would point out, um, and, and all of these positions would require an application, if you're familiar with the process, um, to a vacancy uh, to the um, uh, town um, hall, uh, and the select board would then proceed to um, set up, they have a subcommittee set up to uh, inter interview potential candidates and then appoint people um, if uh, if they see fit. The associate positions uh, on the commission are virtually identical to the regular positions with one uh, sole exception, which is they are not uh, voting members. So they don't vote, but they participate um, to the fullest extent that that any other position uh, on the commission can participate. And in fact, when we are um, missing one of our voting members, one of our five voting members, uh, the chair will designate one of the associate members to fill that position and actually vote. Um, I would say I'm, I'm looking at those of us who are here and actually all of us, no, I guess Sam and Charlene did not come on as associates, but uh, Virginia is an associate now, I was an associate. Amelia was an associate and Pino uh, was an associate. So if you have uh, the interest, which is clear that you do, 
Uh, and, and additionally, if you have the time, which you may or may not have, we only meet once a month, but by all means, I couldn't encourage you enough to, um, to apply because you would obviously be an asset. Um, and second, uh, I, I, I think the, the plan is, is a fantastic idea um, to the extent that we are, we are able to verify uh, that it was, that it was a, a part of the, of the initial intention um, of the folks who, who donated uh, and, and also provided um, the restrictions that are, that are contained in a deed. And, and that's the next question is whether or not this would comport with the language in the deed. But I, for one, on the commission would entirely support uh, having the commission support the idea. Great. No, I appreciate the invitation. And you know, yeah, you guys helped me a couple of years ago looking at my house uh, history. That was uh, appreciated. See, uh, oh. come back, <laughs> coming back. <for> <laughs> <laughs> Pay it forward. There we, go. there we go. There we go. Yeah, we definitely need more folks to help with all the all the projects we we'd like to do. Um, I can show you. There's a preliminary sketch from the newspaper of the proposed memorial grounds, which mm -hmm. there's no grove. The the way it was described was, and thirteen L, and they they were describing it as if it had been planted. So this is the next day in the globe. You know, in the Globe article describing an unrut path, there were the 13 trees lining, you know, lining the path. Yeah. Uh, uh, whatever that, you know, whichever path that is, I don't know. Yeah, well, I'll, we'll just certainly look through the this new sketchbook some more, uh, scrapbook yeah. in more detail and see what else the town archive has got. Um, so yeah, all right. So uh, I you know, appreciate the tip on on where the pictures went. I'd heard that there were pictures. All the pictures I could pick out of the Chronicle uh, were just, they were unreadable because all on fiche, and and it was mm. it, you know you just you just got black kind of like negative uh, uh, pictures there. Uh, as as far so I, so you are the first formal body that I've uh, approached with this, mm -hmm. figuring that that you hopefully and having the sketch there or find other evidence that would allow uh, or the confirmation that yes this was part of the plan or uh, or it actually happened and I have not been able to find other documentation that shows pictures of them or specific reference to them other than uh, it's in you know it's in the red you know it's in the American you know the forestry reg as being received they talk about making uh, 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 designing uh, you know, I don't know whether it's a badge or whatever, but some sort of placard that would be represented for each tree. They talk about that in the Globe article. They talk about it being part of what was there, but that's all I got. Okay, um, Jonathan, do you know, or does anyone else on the board know? Um, does the Parks Department would be kind of uh, involved in deciding making? Uh, decision on doing a planting such as this? I don't know. Uh, it might be the select board, and we may, maybe we can turn to Ms. Herrick and see if she has any, any information to provide. Um, I was just thinking about how to pay for it. <laughs> and, I <wanted> to, <laughs> and I was going to mention anyway, so this year, I'm just completing my first year on the select board. So what I found out was that our legislature our legislative delegation um, asked us, actually with Senator Lewis, to come up with projects. They would try to get us $100,000 in earmarked funds. Now, I found out about it. We didn't do anything about it. We did manage to get some projects submitted and they weren't they were they weren't lengthy. Um, they asked to fill out a, a nominal form and a paragraph about the project, and then we got the announcement that it had gotten through the House of Representatives that all four projects submitted had gotten some funding. So, I just wanted to lay that out there because I I don't know what y'all are working on, but if this is something you wanted to do, um, you know what we what we've come to realize is that if we have projects that are sort of top of mind or ready to go that when grants or other opportunities come up we can react quickly and submit them so but i i do agree that uh probably getting dpw and the tree warden involved if you wanted to go ahead on something like that um i mean you could also ask the select board you know whether they'd be willing to support something like that um another in terms of the funding, another way to do it might be to ask the uh, town meeting to 
approve some money for it, but um, I, I don't see any reason why the select board wouldn't support planting more trees um, in a memorial type of um, situation. We did just address this when we were talking about the water tower and we were able to um, work with CPDC and the residents and carve out more park and we anticipate putting more trees in there. So I think in general, I think we would all be supportive of something like this. This is great. I'd never heard of this myself. Jonathan? Yeah, I would just say thank you, um, Karen. Um, I mean, a couple of things. Um, and this is just my own personal opinion as a as a member, and I guess I'd be interested in hearing from others. Um, number one, I knowing what I do know about the history of Memorial Park, which is obviously connected to those individual um, families and those individual veterans and, and World War I, um, th there is clearly the historical connection uh, between this idea, particularly if it, if it was envisioned historically as a component of the park. Um, so I, there is a connection, I think, from, from the Historical Commission's perspective, uh, assuming that it can be verified uh, or confirmed that, that there is that, that connection, uh, that historical connection to the, uh, to the uh, genesis of, of the park. Putting that aside, I mean, it just as, a, as, a, as an idea, it, it, it's a fantastic idea and, and a fitting idea um, from the standpoint of, of a tribute to, to the, the soldiers, to the, to the veterans of the war, independent of whether there's a connection uh, from, a, from a historical perspective. So I guess my, my thought is, I, I'm not sure that I see my personal opinion, um, but again, I could be, be persuaded or dissuaded. I don't necessarily see it as a project um, to be led by the historical commission. Um, depending on, on how much confirmation we can get that it, that it was originally connected um, to, the, to the genesis of, of the park. But I certainly would see that the Historical Commission would be a, a strong supporter if, if, the, if that is the consensus um, of the commission. In terms of the, the funds, I, I don't know, uh, you know, perhaps there could be a, be a contribution drive and, and obviously the funds are important. Figuring out how to do that is important. Uh, but I think the other important component is just figuring out who is the responsible entity within the town uh, who has the authority to, to make this determination over the park. I, I, that's clearly not the historical commission. Um, and I don't know whether it's, uh, whether it's the select board, whether it's uh, parks and, uh, and recreation. I, I don't know who that is, but I, it clearly would not be us. And I also know that there is the deed restriction and I have no idea how this would, would as I said, comport with, um, with the language in the deed restriction. Yeah, uh, deed restriction. So Amelia wanted to jump in with something. Um, didn't we deal with some, the landscaping or something at Memorial Park earlier? There was a wall that didn't, re didn't. Um... We did, we yes. got, we, yes, we got, I got. I was, was the rec the department. Yeah. Wasn't it well, Jenna Fiorente well, the, the at the recreation rec department? department had, I think uh, they were working with uh, the public works department, but, um, and I don't know whether they had full authority over the park, although you raise a good point. I did speak to the recreation director and I, I have a vague recollection that she indicated that they do have uh, the authority um, over the park. That was in particular about the, the reconstruction of the wall, however. Um, so I don't know whether it's limited to that. Mm -hmm. So I think she came and talked to us then. Jennifer Fiorente, I think, is the director. And yeah, she's the one who came, right? yeah, she's the one who came Jenny and talked Fiorenti, to us. Yeah. Yep. That would be another good another person to talk to. Exactly. To find out who's in, who deals with which aspects of the park. There may be several kinds. Virginia? Yeah. Oh, Let's you. see if I can do this. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, You've got a copy. Hmm. That's that's the, uh, I think that's the first community day. Great photo. Yeah. Um, I think it would be worthwhile to um, assist and uh, try to get a proposal put together and then go before the other boards and uh, commissions. Um, I'd be willing to help out on that. Um, so 
I think you need to have a, a concrete plan before you start checking with other boards. Uh, yeah, part of this, part of this is there. There is there's a direct, like level one, of a response here would be to look to uh, assuming we could find these. This is where the trees were, and if it's a reasonable, uh, if that location is still viable for planting trees, then you know that would be one approach to it. And uh, the other, the other thought that I have in mind, which I I would like to explore, uh, you know, with this group as well as the town, this is where it could get. Uh, it could get more complicated, but I think a positive for the town in general is that if it's deemed a worthy project to resurrect this component is the uh, with the thought of a memorial uh, replacing a, a lost memorial, uh, a gesture to the to the veterans, that something a little different, which incorporated the the trees could be might be created. And it could be more than just the lining of the trees. There could be a little more design aspect to it or a location type of, of place. And that's uh, as my recollection and looking at the, you know, the, you know, the, the covenants and so on about the, about the, uh, the restrictions is that it was meant to be a place of contemplation as a, mm -hmm. as a component of that. And that this fits very well into that into the the intention of the gift and a you know putting aside a corner of something of, of the area that fortunately there's lots of space there and, and not of all, all of it is in direct use that could lend itself to a a more uh, a, a little more I call us more sophisticated design element that could incorporate aspects of, of a memorial tribute to that original uh, to that original purpose, as well as look at, we're, you know, it's 100 years later, and we're in the 21st century, and how might that, might we take advantage of that? And that, that and that, I mean, this takes, this will take thought, you know, and, and, and kicking it around. And that's what I'm, I'm hoping to catch your interest in that to explore some of these uh, variations on a the theme. Jonathan? Just going to propose that, that it might be a good idea just to um, to keep this conversation going, and if if Virginia um, can you know have some follow up conversations with Mr. Shar, the two of you have some conversations to, to sort of see how this develops. Why don't we just put this on our agenda for the for the for the June meeting? Um, obviously, invite Mr. Shar to join us for that as well, and just sort of see um, you know continue the conversation and see if we can push it along. Yeah, we can definitely help with doing some initial looking to see what was there, or what was proposed, mm -hmm. um, and meet with you next month and then kind of uh, go from there. But I definitely, I think we can support the project like this, but not necessarily, I don't know that we have the. Hey, a lot of this is, I, 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 I will benefit from just talking with knowledgeable people, and this is a very knowledgeable group and help putting perspective on this. And I can connect you with Virginia and I can look through the scrapbook and whatever we come up with, we'll, we'll share with you and, and talk again next month. Sounds great to me. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all very much for, for your time. Air hug. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Thanks. All right. Um, Julie said uh, we had the bug shelter update up and Julie said she'd be back about 8 30 to fill us she's, in on that so we she's can, there well she, well she's she's on but I don't think she's in the room so we, we'll skip ahead and then when she comes back up on video we can we can go over that um uh, I didn't have I didn't have anything new on 186 Summer Street. I need to still uh, contact the owners so that we can invite them to next month's meeting. Um, so that's something I need to get information from Jonathan from, uh, you know, probably tomorrow and try to get them in to tell us what's going on. But um, if anyone's heard anything about it since um, since last meeting. Can we hear from the historic district members because I know there was uh, there was apparently some some movement there. Um, so we um, <clears throat> talked to Julie um, about our concerns um, and 
this commission's concerns. And um, I drafted some information to be sent to town council um, and she got the approval to send that along. Um, but the caveat was that because town meeting was going on, we should be prepared to wait a couple weeks to hear from them. Um, and we have a draft letter to send to Criterion, um, which we're gonna talk about tomorrow night, um, asking them to come talk to us um, in light of the fact that, and this is what Jonathan was talking about last time, <clears throat> the certificate of appropriateness says that um, by two years from the date of the first uh, building permit the work should be substantially completed and that drop dead date is june 6th of this year and done really look like they're going to make their uh their deadline so um the wheels are rolling um, with town council and you know our letter uh, hopefully will go out soon and then we can sort of mm, pelt them with letters <laughs> so that's what i have to say yes john um just as a quick follow-up that's helpful um amelia uh and i was i was very interested to find out whether or not the letter had actually gone and whether or not um, you guys had heard from them about having them attend your next meeting, and it sounds like that that none of that has yet gone forward, um, which is fine. But I guess the only the only concern that I have, I I understand about the issues with town meeting and the delay and how long it takes. But I guess to me, um, I would just uh, suggest the issue that I see as of um, a fairly high level of urgency is what is the status of that certificate of uh, appropriateness? Um, you know, what is the legal status of the Historic District Commission's decision uh, come June 6th? Because, and that's that's coming up in two or three weeks. So um, I think that that's really important to clarify because that's probably gonna drive whatever position you folks and and more importantly the town um takes with respect to uh, with respect to criterion whether or not there is no valid certificate and they have to start from the beginning you you folks need to know that the town needs to know that pretty pretty quickly yes yeah. so that was why we didn't send that letter out immediately it was we were hoping that we could get some um quicker feedback from town council that might inform the shaping of that letter, but that doesn't mm. seem like that's going to happen now. So yeah. um, as it stands, hopefully it will go out saying something like, you know, this is our understanding um, and we want to talk to you about what your plans are. Um, and in a perfect world, we'd have some info from town council in our back pocket uh, when we talk to them. Yeah. yeah, Jonathan, that was one of our, that was definitely a topic we discussed at length. And we, you know, we threw around, <laughs> we give them, you know, can we give them a, can you extend it? And if so, does it have to be for two years? Can it be for six months due to COVID? Can it be for one year? And the other thing we discussed was, do we want it to expire? Because then we're kind of at square one with, from the certificate standpoint. So we were, we kind of, we kind of want to extend it maybe. So those were all stuff yeah. we talked about for a good hour, but I think, like Amelia said, town council is going to give us some um, clarification, hopefully, on the uh, what happens if it lapses or can we extend it and, and, and those questions. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate that, Pino. And, I, and believe me, I understand. I, I, I don't know whether it's good or bad to, yeah. to be in a position of saying to them that, that there is no certificate and you got to start from the beginning. But I guess all I am saying is that, you know, when, within no more than three weeks, the town through the Historic District Commission is in a, is in a real rock and a hard place position, not knowing what the hell our position is with respect to that project. And um, I mean, all the other stuff that, that you folks want to get and that we folks also want to get from town council with respect to what other pressure or leverage do we have, that all can be put aside. Right now, what we'll what really needs to be clarified is what is the town's position through you guys as to where that where that that status is because 
I agree with you. you. You're not even in a position to sit down and talk to them until you know what the heck it is you're going to say to them about that. So I guess all I'm suggesting is that I, um, I, would, I would like to urge that, that if we can move, if all of us can move uh, this up on the priority list, and I, I know there's a, lot, there's a large priority list for town council, but I, I'm suggesting this is really important because the drop dead date here is going to be June 6th. And and we don't know, the town doesn't know what its position is. And I'd, I'd like to try to move that up on the town council's priority list. I think I think that that would be really helpful. Yeah, uh, we are talking about tomorrow. We're actually starting at 630 and this is our first topic tomorrow. Um, but I mean, yeah, we can hope, I mean, I, I, we're not gonna hear back from town council, I don't think by tomorrow night, but um, I think if we hear back from them, within a week of that or even two weeks we can sneak in another meeting before it expires and and Amelia and we can discuss tomorrow too maybe we just want to extend it on an incremental basis if we're allowed to um Julie might have Julie's raising her hand hi Julie hi so it looks like I came back at a good time um <laughs> maybe <laughs> I missed like most of what you said about the this topic, but we did receive some initial feedback from Yay. And we are looking to schedule sort of a call with them so we can talk about more about what it means. But just off the bat, it doesn't look like June 6th is a deadline. Um, that deadline was told because of the state of emergency, like many other deadlines. Oh. Um, I haven't had a chance to like discuss any of this with them yet to try to understand more about some of the things that that were said, but I just wanted to put that out there since I heard you guys talking about that. But I'm not sure what you, but that. Means. Yeah, I'm not. I'm, it, I mean, the, 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 that issue, I think, pertained to a lot of things that, that, that were obligations or responsibilities of the town. And this one is, is conversely an obligation, an obligation of the developer. So that, that does seem a little unusual. Right. So, um, let me just make sure I don't misspeak here. Um, so certain permits that were in effect, um, permits and certificates that were in effect as of March 10th, 2020, when the state of emergency was put in place, um, any time frames associated with those were told um, and should expire, I believe, 60 days after the end of the state of emergency. Um, but that's a moving target. Um, mm. If we don't know when the governor will lift that. Um, so basically it, it does apply to any permit that was granted that had a time frame that was expired since March 10th. Um, so it looks like there's a little bit more of a window of time for them to have that certificate. Thanks. Sure. You know, the only other thing, it's not related to that, but just in terms of the discussion about 186, I know we talked about it at our last meeting, and I don't know that we that we raised this at all, but I just wanted to throw it out there. I, again, as with all things, as Pino suggested, I, I'm not sure whether it's good or bad about this, but um, the other thought occurred to me that there is the bylaw um, regarding, uh, I'm gonna call it demolition by, by neglect, um, meaning that vacant buildings, uh, which are not complying with building code, um, enforcement action can be taken uh, under the current bylaw. I'm probably paraphrasing that badly, but, um, I, and again, I have no idea at this point whether or not there is any much allegation that the structures aren't in compliance with the building code, but I didn't want to lose sight of the fact that one of the things that that the town does have as leverage is is that bylaw because it is a vacant building. Uh, Amelia? Well, I was just going to say, since we have Karen right here, maybe Karen, do you have any thoughts or um, suggestions for us as to how we might use select board to move this forward? Um, you know what, this is one of the reasons I want to come tonight. Um, I will say your liaison, Kala Bachi, did bring this up at the select board meeting. And I know this has been going on for so long and I've been driving by and seeing it be vacant and I've seen buildings disappear after they were, you know, allowed to fall into disrepair. So I think this is a pretty high priority. And um, 
given the spring we've had with some other um, property owners in town, um, it would be great to get ahead of this. So, so I, I think you did the right thing. Um, as your liaison brought it up to the select board, we are meeting on the 18th. I would recommend that you you reach out to your liaison again and just use him as the point person. Um, and you could ask him if he'd be willing to um, reach out to town council himself or um, just, I, I would say do what you've been doing and keep the pressure on and so that we can just get ahead of this and be in the best situation possible for this property. But um, it's, it's a concern of mine as well. Go ahead, Jonathan. I'm sorry, I was just going to say, um, Karen, I'm, I'm not sure that you, um, well, I know neither you nor Carla were on the um, select board at the time th this originally came up, but I just want to make you make sure you guys are aware that there is a there is a preservation restriction agreement um, between the town, uh, the select board signed it, uh, the historical commission, our signatories, as is the historic district commission, and, and that is a binding uh, recorded uh, deed restriction. And it does contain conditions and requirements, uh, largely dealing with you know required maintenance and repair for that. So I just wanted to make sure that the select board, uh, I don't know, I'm just trying to think out loud whether any of you were on the select board at the time. I don't sure think you were, but thank you. I mean, I was involved in it and I remember that process and it was not a fun process. And I really wouldn't like the town to have to go through another process like that again. And I don't wanna lose that building. So. But thank you for bringing that up as well. And I'm sure um, Carlo is probably not aware of this preservation restriction. Would it be possible for you to get him a copy? Oh yes. Sure. I just wanna I just wanna work through since he is your lia liaison, I would like he should probably be your point person, but I I mean you can send it to the whole select board if you want. I I'd love to take a look at it again. I was not part of it at that time. Thank you. Yeah, we definitely have those documents between the district commission and us. Thank you. Um, yeah, that would be really useful. Um, any more thoughts about Summer Street? You've got to learn to say, uh, you've got, uh, Sam, you've got to learn to say Avenue. Oh my God. <laughs> it's, it's hardwired into my brain, Summer Avenue. <laughs> I have a friend who lives around the corner at Temple and about, you know, once a month, she says, what's going on with, <laughs> she can see it from her page, she's got a, from her backyard. And we're still it looks worse. It looks head. worse in the back and uh, in the pergola, but what looks worse with the back is uh, the north side is, is looking very, very bad. Uh, it's definitely mm -hmm. getting worse. So, um, all right. We'll move on. And Julie wanted to um, I know. Talk, uh, about the bike shelter plans. Yeah, if now is a good time for everybody, I just wanted to give a little update on where we are with the bike shelter, which has fallen kind of unfortunately fallen down on the priority list. But um, you guys gave me really good feedback. I think that was last October. Um, if that's possible. And so we did go back and I talked to engineering and DPW and we went back and we looked to try to find a better location. Um, and I'll just screen share really quick if that's okay, the location that we're looking at. And then I'll let you know where I am with another part of this process. Um, so let me just find my little plan I had. Okay, can you all see that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. This for some reason, it's freaking weird on my own screen. So I can just see if I can figure that out. Too many Those photos are all pre-pandemic because there's not many cars down there now. <laughs> really? Yeah. Um, so let me just, is it pretty big for you guys on your screen? It's good size, yeah. That okay. looks like the, the raised platform, I assume. Yeah, so this so exactly. So it actually makes a lot more sense probably to put the bike rack near where people would actually be coming on and off a train with a bike. Um, but but yeah, so I, I'm glad that we talked and, and we were looking to kind of put it down here. So it's a little bit further away from the actual historic depot building itself. Um, and DPW and engineering do think there's enough room here in this like grass. It's, it's like kind of grass gravel right now um, and they would put in some paving so that it would be a 
a better structural support um, for the rack itself. Um, the style of rack, I know you guys didn't love um, the design of it. It's a little ugly. The choices are really limited if we use um, MAPC's collective procurement contract, but we do like get them at a pretty good price. Um, I can show you again what that looks like if that's Julie okay. before you go. Oh, <laughs> oh, I can pull that back up and also maybe a street view would be easier. Yeah, I was just trying to figure out is it basically near Swiss Baker on the street side or mm -hmm. where is that? No, yeah. So let me just show you. I was thinking street view might be easier. Um, it's the raised platform. If you know where that is, where they get on and off the train, you got to go up the ramp to get to, yeah. to get to that. Right. So right here, it would be like right here in this location. Um, so it wouldn't be blocking that sidewalk access, um, but it would be a place where um, someone would, okay, I'm getting a notification that my internet's unstable. So is anyone experiencing a problem? like hearing me or seeing me? No, it looks good. No, oh, okay, okay. All right. um, like The horror, the horror of that. Um, so yeah, so this is down here north and the actual depot building is is all the way down here. So it's pretty far away. Um, so is it on the same side of Woburn Street as the depot? It looks like it is. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That is a very convenient spot for, you know, pull up with your bike, get on the platform, get on the train. And, and I like the fact that it's- Yeah, in retrospect, it seems like an obvious, like a more obvious <laughs> choice or location for this. So like, I always say that the public process makes projects better. And now I'm like totally experiencing that myself. So <laughs> um, and I, I, yeah, I think it's nice that it's not gonna be next to the, the depot building because any, anything more that goes up in front of that kind of obscures it. Um, and the, um, you know, the platform is pretty nondescript. Um, right. Yeah. Can we see the, the what it, it looked like again, Julie? Yeah, I hate to remind you of something that you didn't like. Before. <laughs> <laughs> um, but for full disclosure, there are, through the collective procurement contract, there are two companies that have shelters. Um, and so I have two choices, basically. Um, and this is the one that I think actually is nicer looking, um, if you can believe it. And it also allows people to put their bikes in um, horizontally versus like hanging them, which I know there were some comments about like how difficult it would be even for people to get them up on this second layer, second tier. Um, wow. Show you what the other one looks like too, um, if you're interested to see the other option. Sure. Okay. Appreciate the opportunity. Sure. Let me just. I don't think I actually opened it on my computer. It was the other one I think that we that we did see when we did meet with you back in October. I think it had sides and uh, a seat, a bench. Yeah. So it, that's this one actually. This this. Oh, one. it is. This one can have sides and a bench. Yeah, I showed you like a. I showed you the the spec of it. This is just a photo. This is okay. Um, yeah, and let me actually. I can show that what you're talking about. Let me just find it here. Um, I assume more bikes can go under that shelter than what is shown here. Correct. Looks like there are a few more slots. Looks like six can go, at least six can go on the, on each level. Although I don't yeah. know how you're going to get, I could not see getting a bike up on that second level at all. So the one I was looking at, I think fits 16 bikes. Um, okay. Maybe the other view of it that you might, this is what you might remember from last time. Um, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Again, is this a good size for you on the screen? Mm hmm Sure. Right, it's like really small on my screen for some reason. <laughs> um, no, that looks good. It's hard to read the narrative, but we don't need yeah. to get it. But the pictures we can see for sure. 
but so basically I, we could get sides um, and a bench and it could be clear. I think they have like two colors. They have like opal and bronze. And I thought, I don't, I don't know what's best, but um, the bronze kind of looked like uglier to me, although the opal might get like more damaged looking more quickly. I don't know. Is that all of the frame that you're saying would be in that color? And obviously not the roof, I, I take it. The roof looked a little bit transparent. Yeah, so the, that was the opal. The picture oh, that was, the opal. was the opal color. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, okay. And I don't think they sent me a picture of what the bronze would look like. I'm going, going back into the memo. Oh, maybe they did actually. Hold on. Let's see. Julie, are you able to remind us of the dimensions, particularly the height of um, of the structure? Yeah, let me let me just quickly show you this. Um, they didn't send me a picture of the bronze like bike shelter, but they showed, sent me like a color sample of it. Um, so that's on the screen right now. So, oh, sure. you know, okay. like if you have if you feel really strongly one way or the other. Um, if you think one color would help the aesthetics of it, just let me know. I don't think that anyone, like I personally would defer to whatever you prefer. Um, the, then, color, the bronze looks more brown toned like the, the, the platform is, so it might blend a little bit better, but. Yeah, I, I actually agree. Now, it would be good to see the other one. The other one looked a little bit more metallic, more silver. You're saying it's opal, but. Yeah, it's the, um, here, let me show it to you again really quick. So it's just this like, mm -hmm. this part that would be. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. That's, a, that's a blue rather than a silver you're saying, huh? It's hard for me to tell. It looks sort of silverish to me. Yeah. yeah, more of like a clear. Yeah, I'm talking about this like white panel. Versus the oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. You're not talking about then the frame. You're talking about this. No. The roof. Okay, yeah, I'm I think sorry. the frame is the frame. Like, I don't think I have a choice. Although I, I'm totally misspeaking. I probably do have a choice on like galvanized versus stainless. Um, but I think it will still look like steel. Yeah, I, I, I misunderstood what we were, the yeah. colors we were looking at. Okay. So as far as dimensions, I just have to remind myself really quick. So. Um, Mostly the height is what I'm interested in. Yeah, so it's the height. Hundred inches. Oh. Um. So what? So that's eight feet and change. Eight feet. Yeah. So it'll go above the platform, but below the uh, the canopy of the platform. Yeah. Yeah. It'll probably look much smaller, and you know than it does in this photo when it's next to the platform. Mm -hmm. yeah. In this photo, it looks like it's enormous, but I think it, once it's in that small space next to the platform, it won't, it, I don't think it'll feel very obtrusive. And you're thinking of, of, of it this way rather than have the sides and have the, the bench more open like this? I hadn't really thought too much about that. I think I'm open to whatever, like, so my thought process changed when we decided we're not putting it like right next to the depot building. So if it, I was originally thinking if it went right next to the depot building, it might not want sides because then, you know, it would scare the view more. Um, but now that it's like a little bit further away, like um, maybe it would be good to have sides. I, you know, whatever you think, um, it just adds like a, a little bit of cost. It's not a huge amount of additional cost, though, to get the, the sides in the back. The more of that panel you put up, the more that will be to maintain. It's the only. Yeah. You know, it could look shabby pretty quickly on the sides. The roof, you probably wouldn't notice so much. That would be my main option, but it's nice to have the wind and the rain block for the bikes. Jonathan? Yeah, first of all, Julie, thank you very much for 
for thinking of of us again about this and bringing it to us. I I, I really uh, appreciate the thought. Um, second, moving it away from uh, moving it away from the depot is fantastic. So that that basically eliminates my my real my real historical commission concerns in terms of where you're suggesting it go. It's a far better place. Um, and I'll preface my, my own personal comments by saying none of this is is a hill on which I have any interest in dying. It's really not that critical now that it's moved away. But I will say this: it obviously, um, any way you slice it, it's going to uh, conflict with the architecture of the platform, uh, and the architecture of the platform is relatively consistent, uh, at least in shape, <laughs> with the depot. So you know the. The platform uh, structure looks compatible with relatively compatible with the depot, and this is going to change that dramatically. Um, I'm, I'm not crazy about that, but like I said at the outset, I mean, I, it, it's not my issue really anymore uh, moving it away. So I have less of an issue, but I, I can't, I can't deny that it, it's, it's clearly going to, going to block to a certain extent um, the visual of that structure. Um, that's not worth a lot in terms of what I would recommend to you. So I guess that's that's all I would say. It's a great asset and the town really needs it. And I'm sure the folks who bicycle there now and who will bicycle in the future will greatly appreciate it. So um, it's definitely an, an attribute that needs to go there. Yeah. And I think too, it's, it's a temporary, it's not a permanent structure, so it doesn't need to conform as well. In my mind, it's a utilitarian but yeah. necessary amenity and, and I think it won't, won't look, um, um, won't stand out too much. It's kind of, at least from Haven street, it's hidden, um, uh, behind the platform mm -hmm. or Haven. Um, it's not Haven main street. Hi. High street. Yeah. High street, sorry. And then once you're in the parking lot, you're just in the parking lot. <laughs> I don't have any major. Can't things. really dress up a parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else have anything they want to add? I think we're good. Thanks, Julie. It's nice to, yeah, I think moving it away makes a big difference and it'll be more convenient. And, you know. Yeah, thank you. Do you, so do you have any strong preferences on whether it's opal versus bronze or whether it has sides or doesn't? Um, because for me, it really makes no, no difference. I would totally defer to, to your judgment on that. I think the bronze would blend a little bit better. Um, and yeah, the bronze I don't... is pretty open, so having open sides might make, make more sense and will block people's uh, view less. Jonathan? Yeah, I, I agree with that. From the standpoint of the, of the visual of it, um, I I agree that not having the sides is preferable. But from the standpoint of its utilitarian purpose, I'm sure I'm sure Julie's going to hear from every every other entity that it that the more enclosed it is, the better. So that's that's going to be a real tough uh, tough point. I'm not asking every other entity, but that doesn't mean I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then well, what, I was just going to say, if you do, if it does go up without the sides, you will hear from from the users. Uh, could you put sides on this thing? Well, but if it's a crummy day and it's raining, less people will ride their bike. No, yeah, true, true. It's not, it's not a shelter to for people. It's it, you know the bike's just kind of. Yeah rain off the top but um i'm sure visual wise it's better without the sides i yeah i think so but okay i think you can argue both you know make a couple arguments for for that so i guess if folks really feel the sides are important i wouldn't have any major objections okay yeah. um Are there any other thoughts or ideas from anyone else? No. Okay. Thanks for the update. 
Sure. And I will say I am in a very bureaucratic process right now with the MBTA because I also thought I would let them know, even though it's townland. Uh -oh. And first they wanted me to pay thousands of dollars for a license. Ah. Yep. And I fought that one and I was like, this is townland. I'm basically telling you as a courtesy. <laughs> but now they want a surveyed plan and they're not letting me get away with just telling them as a courtesy. So I'm working through that. Um, no good deed goes unpunished, right? So. Well, sure. yeah, I, I, I've, I've not only have I used the T a lot, but I worked at the T for a couple of years. And I can assure you that uh, courtesy is not a word that is often heard or used <laughs> there. Maybe it could just appear in the middle of the night. And no one would know. Yeah, it's just now I've told them, so. <laughs> Someone will be but, out, out on the lookout for it. Yeah. Um, so, so hopefully we'll work through that in the next couple of months and get it ordered and, you'll, and it'll be up before people really start commuting yes. a lot more. So that's my goal anyway. But thank you so much for- Oh, I think Virginia wanted to add something. Oh, sure. At just one point, the um, MBTA never informed the town that they were going to put up all the um, signage that they did either. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Back to my statement. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's much more offensive than any bike rack. Would be. But... Yeah, they have, they have said a lot of great things about it and how it's a um, first mile, last mile, Solving first mile, last mile uh, problems and connections for people is one of their goals. And oh. so there's says so many good things, but they're still like, you really need a license from us. Oh, gee. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Julie. Thanks. You know, your feedback. And um, I'm going to, let me just stop my screen share for you. And then I was going to leave your meeting, if that's okay. Please do. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see many of you tomorrow night. So, yeah. Have a great meeting. Thank you. Good night, Julie. Okay. Good night. Okay. All right. Um, the next thing is 25 Haven Street, and I have heard nothing <gasps> back from them. You so didn't get the emails. Have I not? If I, maybe I'm not getting their emails, but I haven't seen a thing. Jonathan, you. Well, I, I'm not sure what email Virginia is talking about. Go ahead, Virginia. Didn't we get one today or yesterday that um, Amanda had received? Um, no, that was 531 Main Street. Main Street, yep. But okay. she did, um, we do, we do, I know Sam had indicated uh, in some emails that we did get the final information from them and that she yeah. did communicate back to them. I thought that that we were, we, you had contacted them about marking it up for the June meeting, but you I were had. waiting. I think Amanda sent them something as well. So we, I need to check in with her to see if she's received anything back. But oh, I may be mistaken. But the 531 Main Street folks are all all over it. They're they they they're ready for June. Yes, John. Okay. Um, the only thing I, I would want to add uh, to before we get off of 25 um, Haven Street is that. Um, I had, I'm just thinking through uh, the propriety of my communicating this, but um, I think it's okay. I had a conversation uh, when we get to the, uh, to the plaques for the, for the merit certificates. Um, I had a conversation with um, uh, Dave O'Sullivan uh, regarding the postmark. Um, and he, uh, indicated that he has, he was asking where we were on 25 uh, Haven. And um, I think I understood him to, to suggest that they were reaching out for, uh, for uh, an architect or somehow th there was a connection there. Um, so I'm just uh, passing along that, um, that his firm may, may be involved with them, with the applicant uh, as their architect. At which, if that's the case, then I, I, as far as I'm concerned, given the work that we did with him um, on Postmark, and we know that that can only be be a positive yeah. indication. Okay. Um, 24 Gold Street. Jonathan sent us the picture of the plaque. 
that I guess that's that's the finished plaque that came in um, from Dave is that right Jonathan oh yes I'm sorry yeah there were a couple of things about 24 Gould Street one was the um, one was the plaque that uh, that he was going to put the bronze plaque that he yep. was going to put on the outside um, mm -hmm. And the other issues I think we should talk about are, I, I believe I also sent around and I hope everybody got it. There was an email from Dave responding to, to my reaching out to him about the status, as we talked about at our last meeting, about finding out what the status was um, of the project. Uh, and he indicated, gave me the update with respect to a lot of that. Uh, and I wanted to know if anybody had any feedback about that. Um, I also, I, you might have noticed that Jack Williams was included on that email as well. And I, I met with Jack and talked with Jack and confirmed that he uh, would like to be our liaison on that. Although he did, um, he did stress that, uh, particularly since he is no longer a, a uh, member of the commission, that he wanted uh, to make sure that all decisions um, concerning the design plans. He would be happy to be the, the liaison and the contact as a representative on our behalf, but that yeah. all of the information and decisions um, would be funneled through the through us and and decided by us. And I I, I, I haven't heard any I haven't heard any feedback from him with regard to that email either. I'm not, I mean I you know I, I don't know who whether you communicate with anybody else, but we do need to talk about about uh, th those that update information. Um, I, I guess is all I wanted to add. Sorry? Yeah, should I extend an invitation to Jack to come to our next meeting if there's if he has anything to talk about and could present things or I can find out if they're at a point where he's ready to do that. Yeah, I think uh, I mean my own personal opinion is I think that'd be great. I mean I um, I don't know what Jack may be given given what I'm saying about his his wanting to make sure that that it's being driven by us. It, it's yep. probably a good idea, Sam, to reach out yeah, to him. And just mention that you 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 got the everybody got that email right yep. the one that I sent around that you know you you got the email and you just want you wanted to know did he want to be invited to our next meeting and follow up with us about it or did he have any thoughts yeah thanks that's a great idea yeah I think I'll go ahead and do that and then if he can't come I could at least report on on where they're at uh, for that process of designing the community space I'm really pleased with how the plaque looks I think yeah black black look great I. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Can I also? I, I I agree. I thought the plaque looked great, and um, and I guess we can talk about it when we talk about the merit certificates. Um, uh, with respect to those bronze plaques, because we have information about them, and I think we probably need to decide about that. But when I saw this plaque, I just took the opportunity to follow up with that gentleman um, and uh, and ask him because I thought this one looked so good. Uh, to just ask him uh, about it in relation to the possibility of doing it for the other ones. I'm not sure it's going to work for cost reasons, but and we can talk about that later, but um, I do want to talk about that. I thought this came out great. Yeah, they really responded quickly when I gave them our feedback from the original proposal. And they did a couple tweaks to the layout of the text. Mm -hmm. And I love the ASAC corners on them. Awesome. They're fantastic. <laughs> they really are fantastic. And I complimented him on that. They they actually look like they are the, the photo yeah. corners. Yeah. 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 Good. Great. Anything else for Gold Street? All right. I had the utility box project next. I wasn't sure where we're we were headed on that. Um, did you hear from Andrew at all about uh, which one we're going for? Do we know any more about that? Oh, shoot. Because that'll probably drive whatever we do next, right? Um, I thought we were free to go ahead. Um, let me check my email from Andrew. I just remember the last I saw you had sent him an email, you know, and said that we, we, we of our preferences, but I, I thought that well, I don't know. I mean, that, that's up to you, but yeah, I, let me check. I, yeah. Oh, yes. Um, 
So I first got a note saying, it doesn't look like we're going to be going ahead with art boxes this year. And then a few days, and then the next a uh, couple of weeks later, it looks like they are going forward. Uh, but we could act independently of him, couldn't we? But I think we just need to communicate back to him that we're yeah. picking, we're picking whichever one. Our first was. choice was Memorial Park, and the other one we would like is Woburn in summer. Well, that I, yeah, I think I think you would we had we had offered either alter, as in terms of our second choice. I thought that we had we had talked about the two, uh, the depot and uh, Woburn and Summer. Although I totally agree, I prefer Woburn and Summer myself. Yeah. And you know, I I hadn't heard back for sure, so I need to follow up with him. And why don't you just? I think Virginia's right. Why don't you just say that uh, you know that that we're going to move forward with? I think we should just say we're going to move forward um, yeah. with with the two. I think we yeah. should just claim them because the, yeah. I haven't gotten anything for sure and there's plenty of other sites they were interested in. So I'll, I'll go ahead and do that. So then I think the next step is, um, it, I mean, if, if we do, if we, if, if we have confirmed that we're gonna go forward with it, hopefully this summer, uh, which is rapidly upon us, we're gonna have to somehow figure out how to select the photographs, the two photographs that we want to use uh, for it. So we have to, once we clear that we are going to go forward with uh, Memorial and and, um, and Woven in Summer, we got to, I guess, arrange for, exactly. Uh, yeah, for summer for sure. <laughs> uh, but we have to get into, I guess, into the archives to, to select the pictures and then start working with Franklin Marvel about, about moving it along. Okay. You know, get it, get an S, get a a proposal from them, uh, and a, and a cost amount. I'll 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 pester Andrew McNichol again, and let him know we're planning on those two, and let you guys know what I hear back. So. All right. Merit certificates the for the National Preservation Month. Do you want to? compare the two I know Jonathan you sent around because you got quotes for from two different companies for doing plaques for um the post office square and oh what's the other site the name? schoolhouse condominium 52 Sanborn Sorry. <laughs> um yeah. and and uh just to remind folks the the two bids that we got, I, I mean, I, by the way, this was driven largely or completely by Virginia. So thank you, Virginia, for, um, for uh, pointing me in the direction to contact these folks. Um, I appreciate you doing it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so both of them have now, the, the two that are in Pennsylvania, the two that I followed up with from Virginia's um, information have now followed up with their proposal as well as their artwork and i and i've sent them both along so we need to make sure that that we're happy with that and that you know whether we're going to go forward with that i believe that i don't know i forget which one this one is but the two the prices from those two businesses everybody saw this i think were roughly the same one i think was about 832 dollars or something like that. And the other one was 780 or something. They were relatively close. The one that was 830, I think, was adding on uh, shipping, whereas the other one had it included in the cost. So those were the price differentials with respect to those two. Um, so just to the only other information, I guess, that I would add on um, is going back to the, to the uh, Ace Art one. Um, and you don't need to put that one up right now, but but to me, I, I'm just my own personal opinion is that that one looked um, more crisp and clear, and I was curious about it, so I followed up with that gentleman, and I, I forget his name, um, Reed something I think, and he had the graphics company uh, that was doing the work for 24 Gould Street, so I just called him. He was only too happy to talk to me. What he said was that the company that he uses is called Gemini, Virginia Gemini Incorporated. They're out of Minnesota. Um, and this, this is kind of interesting. Number one, 
it's a totally different um, fabrication, fabrication process. The two that we got uh, first that, that Virginia got us are, um, are um, cast bronze uh, plaques. Right. Whereas the one that is going on Gould Street, um, as you would expect, is, is basically computer generated. It's precision tooled. Um, I'm going to mess up the, the appropriate terms, but it's done on what on 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 computer. Uh, it's computer done, and and it is computer um, basically precision tooled rather than cast. So it's completely different technology. So it's, it's carved out. When you say tooled, what do you mean? Yeah. Um, I, I I don't really know what I mean. I can follow up on it. Oh, or what I what I do know is I, I know this from uh, from having worked at MIT at Lincoln Lab, and you can appreciate this, Pino. Um, the the fabrication, the manufacturing fabrication units at um, at MIT, uh, the the, the to, to fabricate all of the metal products all used to be done um, by machinists <clears throat> in the same way that that cast bronze is done by hand by machinists. But they all went over to their. I think they're called INC machines. They are they are all designed and fabricated uh, via computer. Um, so the process is entirely different. I can get more information, or or we can have him talk to us about it if you want. But here's the rub: the cost is significantly higher for these, and I think mm. that's what puts it out of the box, depending on how strongly people feel about it. I didn't get a precise number from him. And he is only the middleman, by the way, because the, the guy that I talked to, the graphics uh, arts guy from Gould Street, he, the ones who manufacture this are Gemini Incorporated, and they are only a wholesale to trade um, company. I shouldn't say only, but, but that's how they do business. The retail price is going to be a lot higher. But what Reed was suggesting is we could go through him and he would... His, the price that he would ultimately give us is approximately 10% less than what we would get if we went directly to Gemini Incorporated. And it's roughly, he said that, that the one that he got for 24 Gould Street, which I think is far more intricate because it has the corners and it also uh, has more graphics, I believe, um, or more narrative. Um, but I think that one was roughly $700 individually. So it's basically twice the price if you follow. Um, but I did at least want to pass along that information to everybody. If we want to go that route, it would be more like, you know, $1,400, $1,500, $1, dollars for two. So the quotes um, you sent one. us, those are for plaques that are like the, the set we ordered in the past. No, I, I the the two that the two that I got from Virginia's companies are like the ones we got in the past. Yeah. Okay, that's right. what I was asking. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, I don't know, Virginia. Oh. Your thoughts? Well, um, the letters are raised on these plaques on the castings, so that um, you get a little bit of a shadow line too, um, and I like the dimension of that. Um, I know during the bicentennial, they made uh, castings out of plastic for some of the uh, houses, but um, I think the bronze, although they are relatively expensive, they, they, uh, they have a certain quality of, uh, about them. That's it. <laughs> but they're both, the Gould Street one and the, the others, they're all bronze, yes? Yes. It's just the manufacture. It's just the way it's made. It's not. Yes. And, and I believe the only thing I would add is that I believe that the yes. And uh, but I believe the Gould Street ones seem a little bit more um, crisp in. in uh -huh. um, I mean, you guys can look at the pictures, but but to me, but but I'm going to my personal opinion is I, I, first of all, I, I, I concur completely with you, Virginia. We, we absolutely, particularly since we've started it, but it is so much more um, of a product that we, we should go with the bronze rather than, you know, than a plastic or any, kind, any, other, any other material. As to whether we go to, uh, to the one like the new ace, I'm not, I, I, 
and that that's kind of excessive and i to me i don't i don't think it's it's necessary yeah i also think the the photo that pino put up earlier that's a that's just a computer generated graphic that's not what it would really look like so right. i as a because i think in the past meeting virginia showed us photos of the the, the previous plaques that we got and I yes looked very nice and i I, I, I'm more on the side of let's go with the $800 <laughs> as opposed to getting into something that's going to be a lot more expensive. But I don't know. What, is, what do other folks think? I like the old ones. Yeah. Um, but can we talk about the wording and font of these? Because I have some sure. things I don't like. Maybe it's just me, though. We um, have to talk about the wording because I want to remind people. I'm sorry, Amelia, but yeah, but but I I think that's really important because what's what was made clear in their in their proposals to us is you know once once we sign on to this, uh, it, it basically is locked in stone. So we have to not only not only um, agree on the wording, but agree on the way the whole thing looks because once we once we go back to them and and say that we want to go forward, uh, we are we are absolutely we're not locked in stone. We're locked in bronze, so there's no going back on that. Uh, to follow up on that, um, I have a little reservation about whether the people will accept these expensive plaques if we give them to them um, before we order them. I think we better make sure we have the okay from the. Uh, Apple, the people, the awardees. Well, to follow up on that, Virginia, Amelia, yeah. I'm sorry. Well, that's um, okay. <laughs> I, I did, I, I hope I communicated this last month, but I did speak, that, that's why I called Dave uh, O'Sullivan right. and, and he was absolutely delighted, although I will make clear, I did, I did, and I also spoke to, uh, I'm drawing a blank on his name, but uh, right, oh, Scott Wolf. Um, yeah. who was the gentleman that we dealt with. He's, he, his company is the managing uh, company for uh, schoolhouse condominiums. So he was absolutely ecstatic about it, as was Dave O'Sullivan. Uh, but I, so they are definitely um, immensely appreciative and very much looking forward to it. But Virginia, you, you're correct in this regard. Um, I basically... Um, the way we talked about it was uh, I was talking with them uh, to get a sense whether they thought the idea was good, not necessarily to communicate it to the uh, to the owners, for example, of uh, of uh, Postmark uh, or to the own, I forget, DiBiase, nor to the um, to the trustees at uh, at Schoolhouse. So they don't know about it um because we basically were saying let's not necessarily tell them i should tell you that with respect to schoolhouse condominiums the trustees are in a state of flux um at least when i last spoke to scott because the the trustees who had been the trustees while it was going through the uh reconstruction uh basically all all stopped uh, serving on the on the board huh. so they're sort of in flux right now um but dibiase would be the owner of uh of uh, postmark, and and he's not aware of it yet. Okay. So in the past, when you gave the plaques out, did you was was it a planned out? How did that work? We have a formal letter that we send and ask for the uh, return receipt. Uh, another letter that says yes, they do accept that. So. In the past, that's what we've used. I have copies of those that I can get to you if you decide to use them. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. And how did you arrange to like get the plaques um, put up on the building things? Was that did the owners do that, or did is that something I don't know, we would do? Well, the no, the owners chose the site. Okay. We asked that they be in a public area, and then uh, we had the fo famous photo taken of uh, them where they were placed. Okay. So. And they were placed indoors, I think, in both cases. But I can say that both, um, at least both Dave and Scott uh, had strong feelings that uh, they, they would love to have them placed outside, although Scott made clear that it's not his decision. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. 
poor Amelia. She, she's been busy, but she had some comments. Yeah, let's look at yeah that. can we look at those pictures again? Um, the, the first thing that I'm thinking is, I don't like the way the name of the commission is down in the bottom and in the same font as the rest of it. Maybe it could be in italics, maybe it could be up at the top where it could it be it Historic be. Commission Preservation Award. Yeah, it does look like it's just a list of one of the accomplishments. Yeah. Not a separate. That's yeah. how the others were done, but that's no reason that we couldn't vary it. And I can I also say, and I know Pino, we can't do both of them at the same time, but these <laughs> are the two, these are the two designs from one of the companies. Um, and I'm I'm gonna guess, I don't recall, but I'm gonna guess the design proposed by the other company is, is the same to Amelia's point, probably. It looks like it is. I, um, and the other thing that I see is I just think on the second plaque, that line describing the building, reconstruction after 2017 major fire, that seems clunky. I would flip the 2017 and the major, reconstructor after major, the 2017 fire. I think that sounds better, but I can let that go. Yeah, it might make more sense to say reconstruction after a major fire in 2017. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So those are my two things. I don't know if I have the other... Um... Were they in the same email? I have one from the Old South Church. I can't. No, follow. they they were not in the same email, Pino. Um, and I while <laughs> while you guys are talking, I will try to find. I know I sent them both. One of them, Pino, was this the one that is that that the the design was actually embedded as a PDF in the email from the company? Because the other one sent me in a subsequent email their their design. <clears throat> okay, I'll look. Here's the old South Church one in case anyone wants to see that. Hello. Oh, yeah. See, for me, every time we, every time a, a screen share takes place, Oh, okay. No, I, I was going to say I can't exit the full screen, but I just figured it out. Okay. Yeah, I maybe take that back then, because if there are ones that are already in place with the name at the bottom, mm -hmm. maybe we should just keep it that way so they're consistent. But you may want to, you know, you may want to either change the font or change, uh, you know, change it in italics. I mean, that's not necessarily yeah. a bad... Or even... Um... Just another little short line separating mm -hmm. right, those levels of information, those the yeah. award that the things we're thanking them for, and then from us at the bottom, maybe just another small thin line or a little ding bat, as they call them, a little decorative <laughs> bed. That would work, I think. Yeah. And it was mm -hmm. still in the same place, but. Yeah, yeah might be a little more clear. Did you get a strong preference, have a strong preference for which company um, you think we'd like to work with, Jonathan, or? No, I, I, I no, I, I didn't. I don't know whether Virginia does. I mean, my only communication no. with them was by email, and um, they were both extremely um, responsive to me. So I don't. Other than that, I don't have any any information about that. They say how long it would take um, to get them made once once the final plan is in. Uh, they did. Uh, I don't recall off the top of my head, and it, it's it's contained in the. Uh, Okay. in the emails if I can find them or if somebody else can find them faster. Were you successful in finding it, uh, Pino? Yeah, hold on. 
So what, what do you want to look up for the prices? All right, hold on. Let me share this. The graphic. That one? Oh, okay. Oh, okay, that's the other one. So I, hmm, is that all we got? That's all I can find right now is, is yeah. I think, all right, let me again get out of the full screen and try to find it. Um, I think the first one we looked at was more consistent with the others. Pino, which, which company is that one? Is that Franklin Bronze? The one I just showed you is Zimmerman. Zimmerman? Yeah. Paul Zimmerman mm -hmm. boundaries. Okay, where the hell is that? And his total is 821. Yeah, okay, 821, so. That's is 760. Is that for both, um, or is that the price of each one? It's for both. So you get two for eight hundred and twenty-one dollars. Yeah, or... the, the the Zimmerman one. No, I'm sorry. I'm, no, I'm sorry. No, I'm... Zimmerman. It's actually Erie Landmark. Yep. Um, and they are four hundred and thirty-eight dollars each for a total of eight seventy-six. That company gave us a historic society discount of 10%, mm -hmm. but, but $33 for shipping. So the total cost on that one was 821.40. Okay. But what I'm trying to find is, did we get another image from them? And that may be the only image that I have. Oh, wait, no. No, this is from Franklin, I'm sorry. Well, both of them are major um, bronze plaque manufacturers. They're in all the preservation magazines. They advertise in the preservation magazines. So. Yeah, I, don't and I know. Go ahead, I'm sorry. We, we used one or the other, but I can't find the records of when we bought the previously. It makes sense to. Um come up with our final wording and, and design and circulate that amongst ourselves next and then um, yes and then um, then we could decide which company to go with or we could yes Jonathan decide I, I think the the graphics from the first company gave us a better picture of what they'd look like you know as a finished thing yeah, I, I think to Virginia's point, though, it, it, the, either of them, I think, are probably going to give you, the, you know, identically good quality products. But, but you're right. One of them is just in the uh, in the black and white, and the other one seemed to be. The only other caveat, I, I I agree, Sam. I think we definitely ought to finalize what the what we want the graphics to to exactly look like before we. Mm -hmm. Do anything. My, but the only caveat with that is both of them indicated that the prices they're giving to me, uh, to us, uh, are good for only 30 days, which um, I think is fine. Although, you know, as as bronze, the, the price may change to some degree, but I wouldn't imagine a heck of a lot. But that's that's all I can say. You send them um, um, just the text that you wanted. For them to generate the, the, what are you calling it? Say that again. I'm sorry. How did how did they did you send them the text in the format? Yes, I think uh, Virginia sent it to me, and I uh, sent it to them. I sent to them, and I can send that all of this community. It wasn't a lot of communication. It was one email, which to both companies indicated. I, that's right. I only sent it to Virginia. Um, indicating what the what exactly what we wanted them to say 
the narrative, the graphic, and then I sent to them photos of the two previous uh, bronze plaques that we had issued. Is there um, maybe is there someone willing to just tweak that a little bit and and send it around to everybody? How about Amelia, you good for that or? Sure. <laughs> Those teenage boys, man. <laughs> I did follow up with both of those companies after they sent me uh, not only their estimate, but whatever their final versions were. Um, and I thanked them and I said that, you know, we had a meeting uh, coming up and that we would uh, follow up with them. Um, and they were, they were very happy to, to hear that, although that, does, that begs the question as to whether the price will change. But I, I thought it would be a good idea just to, to make sure they knew we were interested and we would be getting back to them, but we had a process to follow. We could probably agree on the changes and then maybe get an, uh, maybe you could pick one of the companies and we'll get a new um, graphic from them to make sure our changes look like we want them to open that. Sure, sure, I agree. And I can do it to both or I can do it to, you know, either one, whatever you think, or I'm, I'm happy to have somebody else do this, but I mean, I'm, I'm happy to do it, but I don't necessarily have to. I'll tweak the words, you talk to them, how's that? Okay, so Amelia is going to tweak the words and send it to us. Um, sorry to be a nudge here, but uh, I don't know how any way you slice this. I mean, um, I, I think we, we shouldn't all communicate with each other. Maybe we all ought to just communicate back to Amelia and then Amelia communicate to me. Well, can't we work through this now unless there's a, a major uh, changes that Amelia is thinking of. Couldn't we just go through it now and? Uh... Yep. Well, I, I, yeah, that's a better idea. Yeah, it'd be if we could do a vote to get you know, authorized the, the ordering of the plaques sooner. Otherwise, we might end up having to wait till next month. Yeah. To be done soon. That's good. Okay, so what we just talked about as options were taking the Reading Historical Commission name and somehow setting it off from the text above, either in terms of font or using one of these little doohickey line things. The only thing is I thought we also mentioned that this is how all the other signs are done. And for consistency, I think it's better to have the name of the commission at the bottom, but have a delineation be before it. Okay. How about just another, another line that's just thinner than the one up on top? Right. A straight line uh, between sure. or above the Reading Historical Commission. And then they need to just distribute the space a little bit. Mm -hmm. So that's for both of them. And then that just that bit about the fire and the year on the schoolhouse one. Okay. I'd be good with that. So major 2017 fire, major fire in 2017, either. Well, I'm terrible at grammar, so I defer to, 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 to Amelia and you all. <laughs> The king of editing minutes is terrible <laughs> at grammar. What? What? I, I'm an idea guy. I'm not a. I'm not a specific guy. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> not going to buy that one. Well, seriously, I don't know if I've shared this with people, but uh, back in the day, Virginia, <laughs> when I was in seventh grade, I was at one school where. They were trying out a model with respect to grammar where we, we never, we didn't refer to verbs or nouns or adverbs. We referred to them as 
class one words or class two or they had different names. And wow. my family then moved to a different part of town and a different, uh, a different school uh, where it they didn't do that. It was old school. And I, I was just horrible at it. I, I was horrible at, at picking it up and horrible at the, the diagramming sentences. So grammar is not my strong suit. <laughs> but I, I do get Amelia's point. I so I'm a rotten proofreader. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Amelia, you, you're suggesting the change on the second plaque to read reconstruction. How? Um, after major 2017 fire or yep. after major fire in 2017. Maybe just um, reversing the order means and they don't have to fuss with the spacing. Because if you add another right. word in there, maybe it will mess it up. Yeah. All right. So you're recording that in your yes, minutes. Can you send those corrections to Jonathan so that he can communicate with us? Indeed. And I think by consensus, we're happy with the revised uh, wording. Yeah, so is that, is, I think is this, go ahead, I'm sorry. Quote with a graphic, just send it out and we'll all just double check it and make sure it looks fine. But. Okay, so Amelia's gonna, the way, the way it was just described, we're all good with. Amelia's gonna send it out and, and folks can just sort of give, it, give the high sign and then I'll communicate to the, to the companies, to the two companies. And they will then, I presume, uh, reformulate a mock-up of it for our approval, and uh, mm -hmm. and we'll send it around and do the same thing, the same high sign thing. The next thing is I have I'll, we'll have to figure out. Oh, uh, I suppose did we vote? We did vote up to a thousand dollars, so we already have this voted on, correct? Right. So we don't need to do that. That's already blessed. Awesome. So the only other thing, I guess, well, I, I suppose we can defer making the final decision about which one of the two companies we want to go with once we see the final mock-up. Virginia's shaking her head. I, I just soon choose one of them. They're pretty much the same. So do you want to just choose, leave, the, choose, choose the less I'll expensive one? I'll leave it one? to you. Yeah, it, it's important, too, that um, those little rosettes that are in the corners are covers for screws because it depends how the um, plaque is mounted because they're bronze, they get stolen frequently. So that's why they put these little rosettes in to, so that people can't get into the screws. Oh, it makes it harder for them to walk away. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, that was mentioned, I believe, in both of the... Uh... In yeah. both of the, uh, I'm looking at one of the proposals and it says, um, although I should take this up with them, I'm looking at the Franklin bronze proposal and it says 14 by 10 bronze plaque, blah, 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 mount wood screws backslash rosettes. So maybe we ought to tell them it's uh, brick or. <laughs> but see, we don't know. That's the. Oh, fair point. So the, the, the owners can figure that out. They, they can just get another want to have those rosettes to protect the... Right. Yeah. right. yeah. I would trust Jonathan to pick whichever company he, you think is better. I, okay. But so my, my sense is, since I don't know anything about either of them, I, and they are relatively comparable, I probably would just go with the lesser expensive one unless somebody has, you know, unless I get a different idea when I actually talk to them. But that's mm -hmm. fine with me. And actually, Virginia, if you want to send me those text of the letter that you sent to the recipients, I could. Yes, I, I will. But this was the hardest thing we had to do tonight. <laughs> well, we worked. I think it's great, though. I really think yeah. they're beautiful. Uh, and uh, it's a great idea. I'm so glad you. Uh, you recommended it, Virginia, and um, I think it's it's well worth the price. Although we should talk about that next issue when we do the the budget, but but let's defer that until we get there. 
All right, mm -hmm. so we'll go quickly through the next couple things here. Um, I So I'm almost ready to give our appreciation letters and certificates to Ron and Jack, but I don't know where to get those posters we we're going to include of the historic homes. So I, is that in the town, are those in the town archive? Yes, they're in the um, draws in the map case draws. Okay. The only thing is we usually buy um, inexpensive plastic frames at Michael's or something. The ones that the edges just clamp on around. Yeah. Yeah, I can do something with that. I just couldn't remember. I I thought they were in the <laughs> archive, but I wanted to double check with you before I made a, you know, yeah. effort to get over there. <laughs> and if you if you do get to the archives, don't forget to get a couple of the roof trees books. Yeah, that... I, I talked with uh, uh, Everett. Yeah, so and he said he would pick them up. So we'll as soon as I get those, I'll okay. make some arrangements with him. But uh, we've been in touch. Good. I don't have yeah. anything to say about the town archive because I haven't. But Sam? you got. Sorry, two things. Um, do we do we have to approve a, um, a budget amount on that? Or we could probably do it in June, but I'm just thinking about our budget. Did we already approve a budget for whatever stamps got to buy? We did. Okay. So. And and second, just as an aside, I'm I'm just speaking for myself. Other people may not want to get copies of these things, but when you send, I, I keep um, electronically all of the stuff that that I've done, and I'd like to keep all of the stuff that the that the commission does. Um, in final form. So all of the letters that we do, uh, you know, or documents that we send out, if you could, if you could think of it, um, just, you know, send them to me. I, I don't want to, um, I don't want to impose on everybody else to get them, but I, yeah, I, I file all that stuff. That's a good um, point. I was going to ask if it makes sense if I send it to the, our, um, our listserv. But then that, the past, that get everything I send to everybody, but. I know Ron and Jack begged not to get that stuff. Um, I don't know how other people feel. Um, well, I think they should be copied into the archives uh, computer so that other future members can just pull it up. Unless everybody wants to clean out my old kitchen, which is full of all this stuff. <laughs> No, that's a great point. I agree. So maybe just send it through the RHC uh, forwarding address and yeah, people can dispose of it. But I like keep I like keeping copies of that stuff. Okay. Yeah, Sorry. I was that and then I thought, well, does everyone need to get everything? And then, but um, I'll put it on the if it went to the archive list and not you guys directly. You can look at it if you want, but you right. know, like it's not necessarily something you have to deal with. Awesome. Thanks for bringing that up. And I know um, at some point, I think Amanda takes all, I know she puts our minutes and agendas on on one of the town drives, the, is it the H drive or the I drive. So there's another sp spot where those things are, are being stored too. Hmm. If we ever lose everything, we need to recreate stuff. All right. The letters to the historic uh, inventory property owners went out. And I know I've gotten, uh, I had one friend of mine ask if, if I don't know why they were confused about this, but if um, that meant they, they had to get permission to take their fence to replace their fence. And I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> so I don't know if anyone else has gotten any, any feedback from folks or there were well, a not, couple in the email. Seen, sorry? There were a couple in the email that we got, like in the last couple of days. Yeah. Yeah, but didn't, um, and Sam may not have seen it if she's not getting the RHC forwarding stuff, but didn't Amanda sure. say or somebody said that there, there have been nine additional requests yes. for historic markers? Yes. Okay. Oh, and somebody who said he wanted to know how we came up with the year because he yeah. didn't think it was, or I don't know. And then somebody right. else, one came today and I'm not remembering what that one said. 
I know there was a, uh, someone asking about grants, and Amanda had given them a little, some information mm. she found on Mass Hiss uh, or the Mass Hiss site. I didn't actually know. there aren't any grants available for private enterprises. There are grants available for um, public buildings sometimes, and um, hmm. If federal funds are involved, gotcha. so uh, but there's nothing from the town, unfortunately. We we thought about that once, and uh, it never developed. Yeah, I can let Amanda know that too. So if other requests come in, we all know to let folks know about it. Okay. So Sam, um, one email is from Philip Worth, W E R T H, about Three Highland Street. And then the other one is from a guy whose name is Stephen Dinelli, who is at um, 361 Lowell um, and asking questions about the letter in relation to their specific houses. All right. Can you forward? I don't get those. Can you I can forward them. Yeah. I don't know why I'm only getting like half the stuff. Talk to Amanda about that. She'll work with the IT yeah, people to make sure you're getting that. All, to answer those questions, all you have to do is look up on the inventory form and you'll see the um, at the end of the form, the different sources that were used to okay. come to that. And um, we always use Circa because um, it's very rare that you know definitely whether it was the day the foundation was put in or the time that the front door was used. So. Yes, John. Uh, thank you, Virginia. You just reminded me. Um, sorry to go back all the way to the beginning, but um, and we may have already talked about this. Now that we have added those homes on our inventory, should we be following up with Mass Historical to get them on Mass Historical's list as well? Yes. And yes. How do we Mass How do we do that? I don't know, particularly since Chris Skelly is no longer there. Oh, I was. But my guess is, Sam. I can, I can look that. I can contact them and try to f figure out what we need to do. Okay. Um, going back to those emails, does that mean you didn't see the one from the realtor who wants help naming a street, Sam? I oh. didn't get that. But did Virginia you? Did and she, she sported. You you wrote up some, made some suggestions, and I sent that along. Okay. To them. Um. Yeah, let me see if there's anything else. Oh, Stephen Reardon, who wanted to know, are there any pictures of his property at 220 Woburn Street? Amelia, oh. are all of these to the to the RHC forwarding address? Uh, let me see. Yes. Because I'm guessing that's the problem, Sam, that you're having, and you should definitely touch base with uh, Amanda to, to I get some that. of them, but not all of them. Okay, so you know what? Until this gets worked out, anything that comes in, I, I'm saving them because I'm wondering if you saw them. So why don't I just send them on to you, and then okay. you can yeah. see. And me too. And me and too. You too, yes. Okay. Thank you. Awesome, thanks. I will okay. talk to Amanda on um, as, soon, as soon as I can I'll try to figure out what's going on. Okay. As I, and I look through my spam email, and like I, I look too. at what's coming, and it's not going there instead, you know. Mm. Mm. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Can we move on to the demo delay? The wind yeah. is raw. I liked your. <laughs> well, okay, so I was thinking. Um, <laughs> When I'm awake at three o'clock in the morning and not sleeping, um, <laughs> which is the only time it's quiet at my house because I have too many teenagers, um, it might behoove us to uh, try to look as reasonable as possible when we ask them to give us this thing if we're going to ask them. So first, I was when I you know put things into categories, I was just thinking of what historic structure, what um, primary historical structure went down and which didn't. And if it went down, I said it was a loss. Mm -hmm. If we rethink that, 
maybe um, they'll be more amenable. So what I did in that um, file and also in the photo album, and by the way, those are just the pictures that I could find online. Most of them are from Macris. I'm sure there are better pictures out there. You know, yeah. it, the way that the, the file is set up, you can add stuff too. So if you want to do that. So um, anything, uh, so now what I have is three categories. Anything that was not a complete loss is a win in some sort of way. Mm -hmm. So um, if we had to move it, but we still have it. Um, <clears throat> if it went down, but aspects of the old build, the historic building are reflected in the new one, that's a win. Um, and then the last two, I kind of didn't know what to do with because the buildings went down. There were mitigation um, conditions uh, negotiated, but it looks to me like those folks didn't follow through on what they said they would do. So that was why I called them draws because you know they could send us a check tomorrow or not. Yeah. Um, so that's what I was thinking, and that you know if. I would think that we're going to be using pictures when we show them, you know, we do our presentation. Um, so I was hoping that people would take a look, see if there are errors, see if anything they want to, um, they can add anything. Like, for example, did these last two properties really not do what they said they were going to do? Um, and that maybe some of this can go into presentation. Look, we're not saying we you absolutely can't take down your structure. It's yours. And if you want to take it down, ultimately it's going to come down. But we'd like to mitigate that in some way, either by um, making sure some aspect of the building still survives, or we document it, or you know, 62 other permutations. Um, and so, hey, aren't we reasonable? We're not evil. Give us what we want. Give us some more time on the demo delay. That's what I was thinking. I don't know if that sounds reasonable to anybody else, but. Yep. Go ahead, John. Uh, Amelia is completely unreasonable. <laughs> um, I'm kidding, of course. Uh, first of all, uh, once again, thank you for all that you're doing. It's tremendous work. Um, so I think it's great and, and I, I appreciate it. Thanks. Um, I, I, these are just my own thoughts. First of all, with respect to those two uh, properties, I think it was 258 Main and, uh, and Haven Street. Um, I think they should be removed from the list. They should be removed from, from the list and actually their, their losses, uh, which, which I'll get at in a minute. But um, with respect to both of them, they predate our uh, rules and regulations. I'm drawing a blank on who was here when all of this happened. I know Virginia was. <clears throat> um, and, and that situation was one of the primary motivators for some of the language that I included in our rules and regulations so we wouldn't have this problem again. When, when we worked with those two properties, um, they both agreed to the mitigation of 1,000 in one and 2,000 in the other. Uh, we did not have rules and regulations addressing this. Both of them, <clears throat> um, Couliard uh, on Haven Street, just completely blew us off. Uh, the other folks with Chris Latham went to, were in town hall and had a conversation with, with uh, Julie and or Jean. I, I don't remember who, it doesn't matter. But at that time, <clears throat> they consulted with town council, Ray Mearis, and um, and uh, the response back, I think, was um, unfortunate at best, because his his reaction to it to them was uh, it it's it sounds like blackmail, um, and uh, I, I think he he was as I said that is an unfortunate characterization which couldn't be uh, further from the truth, um, and they then took meaning. Uh, the town, through either Julie or Jean or whoever, took that direction from town council to tell them to hold off uh, on making the contribution. Um, so they're not coming back. They're gone. And Couillard uh, on Haven Street, it, I don't even think is in town. I mean, they, they are, they are, they are 
dead issues. Um, and as a result of that, we weren't consulted with that. If we were, I would have argued vigorously about it um, because it's specifically allowable, um, as, as I think we all know now, that that, that, that mitigation or, or monetary donations or contributions as an act of mitigation, um, even independent of mitigation, just as a charitable effort, um, is entirely permitted, in fact, specifically referenced in the state law. Um, but at the time, with respect to those two, we did not do them according to our own bylaw, because the bylaw says that our demo delay bylaw um, says, so as if the situation isn't bad enough, the demo delay bylaw says that if you are going to get an agreement um, as mitigation, such as a contribution or, or uh, money, uh, it, the, the agreement to do that has to be in writing. And we didn't get it in writing. We simply made it a condition of our uh, early release. So those are dead in the water. And as a result of it, we then put the language that we did in our rules and regulations that specifically provide for it. And I hope and expect that we will never have that problem again. So they're, they're as far as I'm concerned, losses because they both were removed. That's just issue number one. Issue number two. Okay, well, can I just ask a clarification about sure. those that... The mitigation in both of those cases, if I'm remembering correctly, didn't just involve money. It involved the preservation of some architectural the features. Well, the hive well, oven and the contractor said they'd um, preserve some of the elements for future construction or something. So did those two things happen or not? No. The beehive oven ah. is, is gone. They, 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 they just walked away and, 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 and it's gone. Okay, um, so they didn't pay the money or do, because I would think that if they had made those gestures about the preservation of the certain details, we could say that that was better than losing them, but it sounds like they didn't yeah. pay and we lost it any, any, anyway. Correct. Okay. Correct. And even to that point, I, this is just me, so I'd love to hear other people's opinions, but um, I, th I do not think that characterizing uh, anything whether it is, um, uh, you know, photographs or an inventory or uh, uh, including similar architectural features, I don't think those should be counted as wins for several reasons. Okay. Um, number one, uh, as I think we've talked about before, when a historic structure is gone, it's gone. Um, so regardless of whether we have a, 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 a new structure that might look the same or uh, whether we have um, some, some element of it that's preserved, the structure is gone and, and, and it's a loss um, in my mind. Um, although I totally agree that in terms of early releases, because we almost can never win preserving the structure, we always look to uh, get a get a mitigation for early release. So I'm not saying we shouldn't always do that. We should, mm -hmm. but particularly for purposes of presentation to town meeting, my immediate reaction. Uh, so so none of those count. Monetary uh, compensation in lieu of uh, demolition um, is not is not a win. It's a loss, or or maybe it's a draw. But the reason why I think it's bad argument to town meeting, Amelia and everybody yeah. is. My immediate reaction when I saw that list was completely contrary to yours. Um, my immediate reaction was town meeting members are going to say, if you have, uh, if you have um, 10 wins and 11 losses or vice versa, 11 wins and 10 losses, what do you need to change with six months for? Um, so I, I, think, I think it's a mistake to, to give them the impression that, that, that that's a success. That's even just from the standpoint of arguing to town meeting. That I think they're clearly going to say, um, you know, you don't, you don't need to extend it. Then I mean, you're, you know, you're doing really well. You've okay. saved from your own standpoint that you know, 10, 10, You've counted them as ten victories, ten wins, and they're not. We've lost the house. Yeah. So maybe it just needs another characterization. Whether it's you know, house demolished. Um, you know, however, we were fortunate to. I, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. I can think about that. But but I would count those as losses. Maybe losses, but. Um, you know, so I mean, because I don't think we want to communicate to town meeting that we were content with not saving the original structure. 
um because that that's not going to help i i don't think that's my own opinion okay counterpoint <laughs> i had i see the um and we can talk about this on a continuing basis too it's yeah i see amelia's original thought where like look we're giving a lot people lots of options and we're trying to downplay the we're trying to take away your right to draw to knock your house down like <laughs> but yeah if we don't say look this is what's gonna this is what's been happening we're losing these houses we have to, i think we have to be upfront about the houses that get lost that that do get knocked down so, if you think that's a win then what are you complaining about you're yeah. you know you're you're batting 500. yeah mm -hmm. virginia what do you think I don't know because I still don't think the town's ready to change the bylaws. So that's uh, another issue. Yeah, I think the um, the data is there and it's going to be useful. And you've compiled it all. I, I was very appreciative of, of all your efforts. Um, so I'm I'm not going to give any more opinion tonight <laughs> <laughs> this is an ongoing discussion so that's perfectly yeah. fine i don't think it's set in stone that we have to have bring to the town meeting in the fall but i think no. we have thought about it and have information right so maybe we'll just sit on what we have for a while and cook on it at three o'clock in the morning when we're not sleeping <laughs> You should still work on it, but, but I mean, if, if you yeah. were thinking about, if you guys were thinking about doing this at fall town meeting, I, I mean, I, I'm with Virginia. The, the, now is definitely not the time. No. This town, uh, did anybody watch town meeting? I mean, I, I'm sure nobody I, did, but. No, I tried, but I couldn't stand it. I had to give it up. <laughs> so I appreciate you sitting through it. Yeah, I and mean, it was five sessions, but, um, but and it was interesting. I mean, there, there is a strong liberal component uh, that supports what you're talking about, but I am shocked. I mean, what Virginia and I have been warning about um, was what we saw in the past. I think it's getting worse. I think that element is, is, um, is empowered, more empowered uh, at town meeting. And uh, I, I, I don't, I definitely do not, I'm, I do not think we should, you should plan to do this at fall town meeting. We can, we can look to do it. Um, no. But but I, I do not think uh, fall, right now is the time. Well, especially um, I watched um, when there was the homophobic rant um, that was in relation to the position at the library. And it didn't seem like, and then in letters to the editor later, didn't seem like that person got called on it. Um, it only in far as uh, what you're talking about is not on point for this conversation, but not the... Um, the appropriateness of hate speech in um, in our town government. It just, my kids are irate. They're like, can we go and stand in front of our house and hold signs? I'm like, just don't get arrested, please. <laughs> there, were, there, were, there were comments, there were home, I mean, her, 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 her position, I, I completely agree with you. It was unconscionable um, what, what was said, but I will say this, I mean, you know, her, her viewpoint was, I think, uh, largely, I mean, I think it was crazy, but it was largely religion driven, which, which raises an, an interesting element. I mean, she wasn't, she wasn't, uh, the person wasn't, um, wasn't uh, homophobic uh, for hatred per se of, of uh, homosexual gay activity. I mean, it, it was driven by, by a religious belief. However, however insane one might think that religious belief was. But in addition, you probably didn't catch the N-word that was- uh, Yes, I read about that. Um, I mean, just, but, but all my point is, it, it, you know, that conversation on tasers, I don't know if anybody caught the conversation on tasers and the police, I mean- uh, I'm so there, glad I haven't, well, I didn't try to watch it now. <laughs> I we, we spent, we spent- computer. We spent an entire evening talking, literally an entire evening, talking about uh, providing uh, tasers 
to the police uh, or or whether and there was a, there was an amendment that was proposed um, to defer that and uh, defer to a committee to to review and discuss the alternatives and allow for public input. And it drew, you know, the, you know, back the blue, strong, strong element. You know, if the police need it, they need it. Um, and I'm not going to question them. And, you know, the whole casting those people like me, for example, because I spoke about that, um, you know, who support it uh, as, you know, that, that those snowflakes um, or whatever the, whatever the term is. And then we spent an entire evening or more talking about the, uh, the diversity and inclusion issue where people, those people who forgot about the, if the police say they need it, they need it, but that wasn't good enough with respect to those people who opposed the, the diversity position that, you know, the select board, the, the ad hoc committee, the library all say the town needs it, but that wasn't good enough for them. I mean, there's a real partisan divide in this town and, and I think this will just get shredded. Um, I mean, it, I don't know. I mean, it, I, just don't I just don't think it's worth getting bloodied right now about that. It's just bad time. Anyhow, that's just me. You can see I feel strongly about this stuff. <laughs> and by the way, I don't know. Did you, anybody catch Jamie Mon? Did you? Did anybody hear what Jamie Mon said? Do you guys? Uh, you, Jamie Mon uh, is. Do uh, you know Jamie Virginia? Yes. Uh, wonderful man. Absolutely yeah. wonderful man. Um, and clearly liberal, liberal leaning. Um, but he he got up at some point. You talking about the homophobic and the and the hate speech. He got up and actually told town meeting that he has received. Um, yes, I heard that hate mail. I, I can't recall whether it was death threats, but hate mail. Really for for, for, for his for his liberal. For, he didn't say liberal, but you know for the positions that he has been taking, he has been receiving hate mail as a result of it. I mean, the town is people don't a mess. have enough to do. Apparently, in town, Sorry? people in town apparently don't have enough to do. That they no, have... they they have easy access to the internet. Well, that too. Yeah. Well, and when that woman was um, calling homosexuality an abomination, um, I was interested to notice that we didn't see her face. So yeah. the anonymity of that, I'm sure, yeah. emboldens the yeah. you know, expression of the hatred. Yeah. You know, and that you all weren't in the same room. I mean, would yeah. she have said that right. if you could have looked at her? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. My guess is she probably would have. A meeting where you have to get up and talk. Yeah. Versus being able to turn your video off. Right. And... Right. right. I mean, for all of these votes, you know, it, 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 it got so it got so contentious that that either side, depending on the issue that was coming up, was was asking for a roll call vote. For, for the sole purpose of of shaming wh whichever side you you wanted to shame by their vote you know it's like uh having congress uh do a roll call <laughs> vote so people can shame them for taking the position they took i mean it's it's bad it's bad right. we should move on to yeah. the, on the agenda <laughs> i just had to switch to off my wi-fi to my phone because our, our after 10 <laughs> off at 10 in this house <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sam turns into a pumpkin at 10. <laughs> no, that's to keep the kids from staying up until 3 a.m., but it also but it is an hour past my bedtime. So Okay. Well, let's go. Okay, moving on. Yeah, so I had membership and I don't know why. Well, we ask Mr. Shore to join us. Yes. Yeah, um I I'm up for re-election, so I did sign on again. And again, and again. <laughs> Charlene did as well. She let me know. Oh, okay. We up her turn. So. Oh, I mean, we don't have associates, do we? You know, just Virginia. So I was going to yeah. say you have to sign up every year, right? Yeah, oh, two okay. years, I think. I'm not sure. Yeah. Whatever. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So, so finances. We should talk about the budget. Amanda asked it, so it was $480 to do all the legal notices for the hearings. Um, we have $750 left in our budget. It's unclear to me at, like it, if, if we have to pay for that stuff out of our budget. Uh, the, the mail? Who paid when we did the rules and regulations? Sorry? Who paid when we did the rules and regulations? Because we did the notice on that too. 
And I'm going to guess we didn't pay. I don't remember. We didn't. Pay. We didn't. I mean, I have a real concern because they put out four or three different um, legal notices when they could have just listed the um, three properties and done one legal notice. So um, I was very upset when I saw that. Well, that's my fault because I gave Amanda three different legal notices because I was following. Yeah. I thought that's yeah. what we had to do. Oh, okay. Well, why do legal notices cost four hundred and eighty dollars? I guess that was also postage for all the letters and things. Because it goes in the paper, and the paper costs a lot. But the question is, where shouldn't that come out of some administrative account when we're we're an, we're an we're an age, you know an entity of the town? That's crazy. Certainly, certainly, the postage should have. Yeah. It has in the past, but there's different people in positions now at town hall. So, I mean, I wonder when CPDC. Oh, I guess they get the money from uh, they get the money from the the applicants. Yeah, but I think we should, you know, put. I know that's what Amanda said, but perhaps we should just push a little bit on that. Oh yeah, I because yeah. you know, like if we didn't pay for the rules and regulations, then you know, I mean, I know this is oh. then, and, you know, this is now, and that was then, but. I will ask, I will try to find out who else could pay for that. And I'll tell Amanda not to take anything out of our, our $750. Yeah. Well, that, well, that, that's less than the plaques. So are we kind of no underwater at this point? Well, that's what I wanted to talk about, but we do have, <clears throat> we do have the, um, grant. we do have the grant. So we have a thousand dollars. We don't, we don't know how much Franklin's going to charge us uh, per se, but we have three thousand dollars from the grant. So okay. you know, presuming the, and and the, the grant was explicitly uh, unrestricted. Yeah. Um, so we we can assume that roughly two thousand of that will be for uh, for the utility boxes. So I do think there's some um, some flexibility there, Sam. Okay. Great. The other thing. Um, Virginia, uh, last year, so we only have 750 and depending on what we're doing, um, oh, okay, I think it's sort of the same thing as last year. We had $1,300 left over and we had a, a, an estimate. It wasn't a bill, it was an estimate from Franklin. Yeah. Um, and we were able to have the treasurer's office. Encumber. Encumber. Mm -hmm. That thirteen hundred dollars from FY twenty, based upon the fact that we had a a you know a project. a commission voted project and a bill, we mm -hmm. were able to encumber that money over to use in the next year. So depending on where we are now with um, what happens with the four hundred and eighty, but but regardless, since we do have bills from you know, Franklin Mint or whoever they are, and to vote to, to do these plaques, whatever, whatever is left over, we should maybe have a conversation with, uh, I think it's, I'll find out who I talked to before, but you should have a conversation to see if we can encumber whatever's left over to, to the next fiscal year. Right. Did, I, did that make sense? I'm sorry. Yeah. So we could maybe ask to, to, to use that say we want to use that 750 towards these plaques we're going to be getting yeah we we have a bill uh, we have a we have an estimate we we have a commission vote that we're going to do it we are close to the end of the year and it, and it's probably going to happen in fy 22 uh, an extension yeah yes can, can we take that funds with those two with those two characteristics we can take those funds and, and and move them into our budget for next year. So we will have, oh, have that, that little buffer. Okay. And I just can't think of the name. The woman that I spoke to, uh, she's not the treasurer, but she's in that office and she was incredibly helpful. And that's the person you should talk to. And I'll find out who that is and give you okay. her name. Yeah. Yeah. If you can find out who, and then I'll, I will yeah. ask about doing that. If I could do that at the same time of the Zoom, I would. But you guys are better at that than I am. But I will get that information for you. Thanks. But any other, I think that's all the budget stuff we needed to figure yeah. out. I have one thing for new business, which is just to say that 531 Main Street uh, submitted their application 
they're on board for having their demo delay hearing uh, at our Zoom meeting. So I will now start reading up on demo delay hearings. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Piece of cake. <laughs> no. How many legal notices do I have to send out for this? No, no, that that's easy. That that's easy, Just and they, they they pay for it, so that's not going to be a problem. But I, I'll share with you what I have. Yeah, but I know Amanda has been working with uh, Chris, whose last name I forget from Latham. Thank you. Yeah, but um, they're all they've got the abutters list. They he's dropped off envelopes, so they're all they're on top of things. Yeah, and I drafted the you know the outline. It came from Charlene um, that I used when we introduced the the hearing, and it lays it out in pretty great detail. If I haven't already shared that with you, I will. But awesome, yeah. yeah. I figure I'll start kind of prepping for that soon. Sir, any other new business? To... Oh, just a, a follow up on that uh, naming at the post office uh, the restaurant that's going to open the, and the look license that um, I think we should still send the um, letter to the Board of Selectmen regarding the name that it, it's an inappropriate name um, if other people agree with that position. I thought we had sent that letter. No, it didn't go out. I was, I, I, I was not on top of that. Um, okay. But I like the way you reworded things, Jonathan, so I'd be happy to send out sort of that version of the letter to the select board. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's a, it's, it, is, it is a little after the fact at this point, which is unfortunate, but um, I mean, I don't see why they can't go back and rethink it because, you know, they're already trying to market it. So, um, And it's going to be time delayed anyways. It's quite a while. Um, and yeah. I did get the names of the new owners that will, but I don't have it handy. Yeah. <laughs> it's in the know. newspaper. Hmm. Yeah. So if there are no objections, I'll I'll go ahead and finally and get that letter out. Very good. And just another quick thing. I noticed in the um, paper tonight there were two legal notices from the Wuben Historical Commission, and they have two demolition delays coming up. So everybody has the same issues. Mm. <laughs> So who's go who's going to respond to the person about the grants? Oh, Amelia did send something, and I'll, no, I'll Amanda. I don't know. Sorry, Amanda. <laughs> yeah, this afternoon. I think we should be calling Amelia Devon. <laughs> yeah. Amanda had had sent some response, and I'll follow up. To say we don't know of any other grants for for you know individuals individuals yeah thanks yeah i've got that down here and i'll look through all the other emails that i didn't get that amelia will send to me <laughs> um, which also made me think a while ago we got two emails from um the library people who wanted help dating their houses did you not see those either those I, I uh, Virginia helped me with that, and we're all set. Okay, okay. Those I saw, they were from Eileen at the at the library. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Should we review the minutes? Or uh, shall we wait till next time? <laughs> How quickly can we do that? I'm done. It did, yeah, Jonathan did it. So. Yep. <laughs> it wasn't much. It was great. Yeah. So there was just, I think, a question, yeah. Virginia, um, about um, on page three about the letter costs. And I had written down, you said the CPDC usually pays for it, but Jonathan, that wasn't how he remembered it. Or maybe just be worded different that, I mean, I don't know why the CPDC would it's be paying not, for our it's not. It's not CPDC, it's Community Development Department. Uh, but, Department. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, thanks. Yeah.
So should I move to accept the uh, the minutes as revised? The minutes per April 14th, I think, or the, were there other questions? Second. Awesome. I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll go around with the vote. Um, you know? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. Amelia? She says yes. 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 <laughs> All right. Virginia? Yes. And yes. Great. Right. I will make a motion to adjourn until next I, month. All of us will second. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm finally done with this book. I've been rebinding this collection of photographs from the Salem Marine Society in Salem. They've been around since 17 something. And wow. The book weighs 70 pounds. No, at least 50 pounds. Wow. And they're finally going to pick it up and I can finally stop working on the weekends. So I'll have a little more oh. space to devote to some of this stuff. So. Good for you. You're, do you're doing fine, Sam. You're doing fine. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's not it's not easy it's <laughs> it's a lot of stuff to do so yeah well i'll start with trying to make sure i get all the emails that'll help yeah that's yeah. a good start that's a good place to start okay so should we vote yes uh i vote yes virginia yes Tino. yes jonathan yes amelia yes <laughs> 10 12 okay hey, everybody good night pleasant dreams everybody oh. <laughs> Stop till three. Get a good night. Have some hot cocoa or something. Yeah. yeah stop thinking about demo delay. Count something else. <laughs> I'll try. As they yeah. I don't find that worry lets me direct it. It goes where it goes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah hamster brain is not a fun place to be. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good All right, night, kids. everybody. Good night, everyone. All right.